Bill, the Rick House. Register for Army ROTC to be a leader and an officer in the U.S. Army, Army Reserve, or Army National Guard. You could also be eligible for a full tuition scholarship. Lead the team that makes a difference. To learn more, contact Dale Anderson at 252-622-5346 or Anderson, D-A-L, at ECU E-D-U. Paid for by the United States Army. Hi, I'm Annalie Newhoff. And I'm Rob Campbell. And, and we, we are, are with, with Copy Pro. Pro. We have been locally owned and operated here in eastern North Carolina for almost 50 years. Copy Pro is the leader in office technology. Does your business struggle with keeping printing costs low or producing professional documents? Here at Copy Pro, total customer satisfaction is our number one priority. We have a variety of solutions to help reduce your printing expenses and make your business more productive. Call us today at 1-800-682-6558 or online at copypro.net. Copy Pro. We are the professional office systems people. This is Pirate Radio, WGHB Farmville, 1250 at 92.7 FM Greenville, WDLX Washington, 930 at 104.1 FM Washington. The following is an exclusive presentation of Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. Welcome to Pirate Radio Live. You can paint this with purple! Now live from the Pirate Radio Studios in the heart of the Pirate Nation, here is your host, Clip Brock. Hello everyone, welcome in to Pirate Radio Live on a Wednesday. Clip Brock here with you inside the Pirate Radio Studios and coming to you on Pirate Radio 92.7 FM in Greenville, 104.1 in Washington. We are online, pr927fm.com. And we are available to be seen. This graphic Glenn has is freaking me out. It's like a pirate with weird eyes. I'm scared watching it. Uh, we can be seen on Facebook Live and YouTube Live. That's pretty cool, Glenn. We got the big dog Glenn Griffin, video production. We got Shirley Rhodes, audio production inside the Pirate Radio Studios today. And we have a uh, hooded creature joining us in the studio wager mcgee who we will talk college and football with in just a moment also on today's show kevin monroe former pirate now the color analyst on the pirates img sports network joins us at 4 15 get his thoughts on ecu's win over south florida look ahead to navy c austin cox will join us from the aac daily to take a look around the aac and talk ECU Navy. And then Bryce Williams, former ECU tight end, and the voice Jeff Charles will join us at 5 o'clock. So a lot of Pirate football talk today. A lot of Pirate football talk going on. You can join us uh, via Twitter or Facebook Live. Josh Thomas says, any word on Holton? I'm assuming he's talking about the starting quarterback for ECU, Holton Aylers. Um, Yeah, no, there are rumors around, uh, but no, no, no word on Holton. Nothing official. And we may have, uh, I don't know, some some news on that after today's practice uh, when the coaches speak. So stay tuned for that. We'll have uh, all of uh, Donnie Kirkpatrick and Blake Harrell scheduled to talk today uh, later on. And uh, perhaps Mike Houston as well. We'll see, but we'll have it for you here on our Pirate Radio social media sites. If something does break, we will let you know. All right, Wager McGee is here to talk about the upcoming football weekend, but let's not wait till the weekend because we got a game tonight. We got games on Thursday, Friday, uh, games all over the place. Wager McGee, how you doing, sir? I'm good. How are you? Yeah these these games. I mean these games are as good as anything on Saturday. These are as good as Florida or whatever Alabama, Georgia. I agree. Uh, not doing good. Iceland just scores to tie it up with Belgium. <sighs> Uh, I tell you what, um, let's start with ECU Navy, though, because a lot of line movement in this game, and as I come to you right now at 3.02 on Wednesday afternoon, the line has shifted. East Carolina is a one-point favorite. Excitement time! Excitement time! Uh, Against Navy, the total has gone down a little bit to 58. Look, I I just kind of base this off past meetings. I cannot. I, I can't take the Pirates in this game. I just can't do it. Uh, and and I mean, you all listening know the results of this matchup throughout the years. Uh, but uh, that line is uh, is really making me scratch my head right about now. Wager. I I, I mean, you were you, you were talking about uh, Aylers 
maybe well, being out this there, week. There, there's rumors. There's be, there's talk about it. I don't know anything. Maybe we, can we call a media person up and ask them what they? Uh, we can, yeah. but they're not going to say anything. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, as, look, if Ayler starts for ECU, I, it really has nothing to do with 2020 and ECU. It has more to do with the history for me and the way yeah. Navy has just. Now Blake Carroll's in first year defensive coordinator. He, Mike Houston, these coaches have coached against the option. They have coached the option on offense. They know the option. So, also, this is not a great Navy team. They're 2-0 and in conference play, but they've been blown out by BYU and Air Force. So, I see those two factors, and as an outsider, I probably would take the home ECU Pirates in this game. But as somebody who's seen this matchup so many times, I just can't do it. I think if you take that, what you were saying, the history of it, if you just walked in and you looked at that team this year at Navy team, that was Air Force's first game, and they beat them 40-7. to <clears throat> Air Force beat Navy 40-7 the first game. Temple's first game last week, 31-29, Temple went for two at the end to try to tie it up. So they've struggled back-to-back weeks against teams that are just playing their first games that – Air Force didn't even have a spring training or a spring practice. I don't know if Temple did or not. And we know what Tulane, but Tulane clearly now can't stop anybody. So BYU is the one good team that I mean was kind of on an even scale, and they beat them by fifty-two. Yeah, I don't. I mean, what? Well, so what are you saying? I, I think I think ECU is the right side, but I, the yeah. over definitely right. That's the history of these teams. True. As soon as it kicked off, although last year ECU only scored ten points, that was kind of the outlier though. Maybe Every tried other to time. help though. It was forty two to ten. Yeah. After the, since then though, it's been it's kick off and they put seventy points up on the scoreboard and go Pretty from much. there. And the total's what fifty eight now. <sighs> it seems like I guess check the weather in Annapolis. So. Well, it's here in Greenville. Oh, okay. I would check it here. Let's check it here then, <laughs> which is going to be nice and sunny. <laughs> but check the weather. Make sure they have a safe trip in, right? <laughs> safe flight and everything. They're Navy, though. They can hop on some sub and <laughs> boat around there, can't they? They can. They don't though. even have to worry. It's not Air Force. They're not flying here. They have the ability to do that. Yeah. Uh, Chad tweeted us and said, let's talk about Ryan Tannethrill and the Derrick Henry stiff arm. We'll get to that, Chad. We'll get to He that. means the lock of the year. I know, but I don't think you're – I don't uh, – no. It, I said we just need to get to kickoff. Yeah, but I still think your lock of the year makes sense, your look-ahead lock of the year, if the game's played on Sunday and the Bills have to turn around and play the Chiefs on Thursday. In this case, it gets pushed all the way to Tuesday. The Bills aren't thinking about the Chiefs all those extra days. Yeah, they are. And the Chiefs are sitting there getting 48 extra pra- hours All right, you of got practice. it. You oh, got, yeah, we'll go ahead. You but, got the yeah. lock. Congratulations. There, uh, there, there won't be another. We'll wait till 21. I wish uh, Florida that you loved would have gone your way. <laughs> <laughs> Wager, that pissed me off all weekend. <laughs> because it's the first game of the day. It's new anyway, let's move I'll on. I'll tell you one week we got we we I tried to pitch that betting one oh one thing to you and I need as much as anybody else, money management, because I'm the same way. I was like, Well, that's a great twelve o'clock game. Let's go all in and then all of a sudden I'm reloading my account at one thirty. <laughs> yeah, not fun. So I mean, yeah. Coastal Lafayette tonight, Louisiana taking on Coastal Carolina. This game is in Louisiana. Uh, you said, Wager, that this is one of those where all signs are pointing to Louisiana, at least from a a sharp standpoint. Yeah, the, the I saw a note this morning uh, on a Twitter handicapper, but pretty respected guy, that 70% of all tickets that have been written, sold basically in Vegas, have been on Coastal Carolina, but yet the line keeps increasing. So it should go the other way. So that means the money is far outnumbering the tickets on the other side. So every sharp, every smart money, every respected player, and that's all. That's what the books adjust numbers to and try to try to you know hedge and protect themselves from. It's from seven up to nine. It's a nine right now. Wow, Louisiana favorite. So every bit of like big respected money that any book has, it seems like is coming in Lafayette. But I still want to lean towards coastal. <laughs> Uh, well, now you're getting a better number. Just well, because just we know what waiting. we see. I mean, I think the, the the Louisiana Lafayette numbers have been overstated every year or every every game now since they beat Iowa State. They're 0-2 against the spread. Both of those are Sun Belt Conference teams that have covered those spreads. And really, Georgia State and Georgia Southern both could have beaten them. And this Coastal's offense is, I mean, is, is kind of clicking right now. We'll see what they do against his two best running backs in the Sun Belt. Uh, here with these guys. So Mitchell for Lafayette, Marble for Coastal. It could, we talked about it, I, th- I think I might lean under 
because I think that number is is up there because it's a standalone game and it's it's inflated a little bit. But both these teams are going to try to run, run, run it. Last year was forty eight seven Lafayette. Two years ago in Lafayette. Coastal actually went in there and won 30-28. So they haven't gotten out of the 50s in the number 60-something. Looking for an... In, it, it, Thursday is where we could get to 100. I think right, I may fade I may fade uh, and play the under a little bit here. So uh, I don't want to see it. A tease opportunity because you could get Louisiana down to like 2 or 3 and put the total in the 60s, mid-60s. So something to think about there. Yeah. All right, um, Redbeard says, scoreboard says the Bills were looking ahead. No, it didn't. All it said was the final score. It did not say anything about looking ahead. Also, I feel like Redbeard kind of used to be antagonistic towards Wager, and now he's, he's on your side I, against I, me. I, yeah, I think he's uh, he's on Team Wager for sure. <laughs> um <laughs> He's come around. He He's used to around. hate the rambling. Now he, I think he, you know, we talk enough NASCAR that Redbeard's happy with us. Oh, we got to make sure we get in NASCAR today. Where are we? Kansas. We're Kansas. All right, we'll do that at the end. Um, all right, we talked about one game in ten minutes. This is not good. All right, well, we got fifteen extra minutes. That's so true. We filled. We got uh, stoppage time or whatever. Let's move on. Extra we keep time. going back to the Bills game, but I will say <laughs> one last thing: they were without their key linebacker and cornerback last night. I don't know if they were resting them for the Chiefs game or what. But once those guys were out, but the Titans were without everybody. I think people just still don't respect the Titans. Who were their group of wide receivers besides AJ Brown? And again, how did Johnu Smith? How did old? How did anybody stop Ole Miss with DK Metcalf and AJ Brown? Who's their quarterback? on the outside? That's how they stopped them. Yeah. So yeah, Eli. <laughs> uh, Thursday night football: Georgia State, Arkansas State. Arkansas State three and a half total seventy three. Oh, you like this over? I, I love state Georgia State. Sorry yeah. to clarify on that. So I, I know it's everybody's favorite team in Eastern North Carolina now, right? The Georgia State uh, Panthers. Two and zero against. That could end up being the last loss of the year for ECU. I maybe so. Maybe there was some. <laughs> There's some good things coming out. Well, state hadn't played since then, but they played two games again. Had Lafayette beat, lost in overtime, and then everybody saw what they did with ECU. This game. Uh, and last year, I think we referenced this when we were talking about ECU and Georgia State, was how comfortable State is playing to- uh, playing up-tempo games. This kind of was one of them. Last year, it was 52-38 Georgia State at home. They won. They had 722 yards of offense, and that was before they started going up-tempo that they're doing now with that new freshman quarterback. The last three years, 52-38, 51-35, 48-34. All right, we like the over. I, I if it doesn't start with an eight, and I don't think that total starts with an eight. <laughs> Seventy three. We might get to a hundred in Jonesboro. All right, we got a possible one hundred from Wager McGee coming up on Thursday night. So tune into that and take the over. Take the over. I, it, it, I mean, I don't know if people around here can bet Georgia State good money, but I'm, I'm taking three and a half, and I'm sprinkling a little money line too. I love the Friday night doubleheader. We oh. have SMU as a road favorite against Tulane. Total 64 and a half. And then BYU takes their show on the road. Maybe their first test of the season against Houston, who, as long as they weren't fumbling the ball last week against Tulane, looked to have a really explosive offense. Uh, but BYU is a five point favorite total at 62 and a half. Now, the problem with and, and BYU, what did they do? Kind of sleepwalk through their game against the Roadrunners last week? Oh, that. They like the under on that one that they were going to be looking ahead for this one. Uh, I think UTSA is playing a lot strong. We'll talk about that one a little bit with Army. But I don't know what to make out of that one. I, I love SMU just because the two lane defense really hasn't stopped anybody yet. Okay. And, and you got them less than a touchdown. Let's go SMU. Yeah. Like it. yeah Anything and, on the other? The problem with BYU, I was going to say before last week is they were doing their part for overs, but the opposing team wasn't scoring. But Houston can score, so could they do their part? It's still a, a pretty large number at 62.5. Yeah, and I, I kind of like the side, I think, oh. the Houston side. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, it's, you know, again, we should get a lot of improvement from game one to game two. We've seen it all the time. This is only Houston's second game. I, I think they will get up for it. Again, a primetime game here of getting and starting. BYU... Not great on the road, but before Navy, and I guess I, I guess they were at Navy that one neutral site. They were zero and five as a road favorite before that game. Uh, yeah, I kind of lean Houston a little bit on that one, but don't love it as much as I want to. So we got a game tonight, a game Thursday night, double header Friday night. So enjoy that, folks. Uh, let's get into Saturday, and we'll speed through the ones you don't like at all. Boston College, Virginia Tech. 
I think I love BC in that catching eleven and a half. Twelve and a half. I'm Twelve and a half. I, I mean, I watched the BC Pittsburgh game. BC really shouldn't have gotten to that point. The pit guy kicked a fifty-five yard field goal late and then missed the extra, missed point. The extra point. Student kickers, but um, I mean, BC is a under new head coach is three and zero as a as a dog. They're seventeen five and one as a dog in their last twenty three. I don't think there's that much separation. Who's playing for Virginia Tech? Who's not playing? They get into shootouts every single week. I'll take twelve and a half with that quarterback and being able to throw the ball against them. So Pittsburgh on the road at Miami, ten and a half. I don't. Th- the pit the pit quarterback went out late in that BC game and limped around the entire time. If he's not picket, if he's not playing, they said that he's just going to go. So I know a lot of people I've talked to love Miami because of that because he's going to get out there and he's not a hundred percent. I don't love it either side. I looked at Miami off of a loss, that first regular season loss when their season gets kind of crushed, you know, and they're not going to win national championship. They don't do very well after that. I think they were one in four against the spread the last five years after that first loss. So I don't love either one of those. A nooner in Miami is going to be kind of a snoozer. Could be, I don't know. All right, South Florida Temple. Temple 0 and 1. South Florida coming off a loss to the Pirates. I think you got to lean South Florida, if anything. Oh, I'm sorry, Temple. My fault. Yeah. Temple, second game. Uh, there, yeah, I, I think. I mean, USF in their three games been outscored 124 to 31, so average of 41. You're 10. not counting the Citadel, not counting the Citadel. It's yeah. FBS games. I, I, yeah, Sorry. I'm with you. Yeah, I, I think Temple in their second game get some improvements there. So yeah, the, the other side. Talk to ECU Navy. Uh, we'll circle back to that at the end. Uh, Duke NC State at 3:30. I, I I don't know. Duke is now last two games has scored thirty one thirty eight. So do we stick with the fade North Carolina State and over? Go over fifty nine and a half. Yeah. All right. Hope for a shootout. Virginia at Wake Forest. Is Virginia playing the punter at quarterback this week? <laughs> I'm not following what's going on at Virginia. <laughs> if thir- number thirty six that's built like a punter is playing quarterback for Virginia, I didn't Wake. I think it was a three point spread. Right. It's uh, Virginia minus two and a half. Hey, Wake, we haven't seen much of, right? I mean, they played well against Clemson. They have a couple weeks off. They beat the they beat Campbell, Campbell. by 40. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I'll take him over the punter playing quarterback. <laughs> Three, third, wait. This is 12 o'clock. Auburn at South Carolina. I like South Carolina. Muschamp, Ugh. 7, 4, and 1 against spread last 12. How Auburn keeps winning games and getting called the spike that was really a fumble oh, lateral last yeah. week. They should have lost to Kentucky. They just can't score. I think what is it? It's not a big number. Three, three and a half. Three and a half. I just I, I like South Carolina plus the points. How about the Tar Heels on the road in Tallahassee against Florida State? What did I say? Last time they were last time that uh, I think it was uh, the Bear right Fleekus tweet out last time Florida State was a double digit home uh, dog. It was that time where they showed the guy in the stands shirtless reading the book. Right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I don't. <laughs> Hey, Florida State's horrible. Yeah, hey, they, they've allowed fifty-two and forty-two in their last two ACC games. I, I don't know if Carolina is now if continues to to go. I don't know how they're not going to score a, again. I, in North if Florida State covered at Notre Dame last week, sixteen and a half, whatever it is, thirteen and a half or something. But they're fourteen twenty-six and two against the spread. Florida State's one of the easiest bet against, worst to uh, you know, worst against the spread in in college football right now. So. I like Carolina, and they're not stopping anybody. Notre Dame's passing attack killed them. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be surprised to see how we'll do the same this week. Nooner, Kansas, West Virginia, twenty-two and a half, fifty-one and a half total. Man, that's an ugly game. I I, I do like that West Virginia team, but it'll probably be a nothing. Liberty is a road favorite at Syracuse. We get that. This is the uh, waving at Hugh Freeze. Hugh Freeze from the uh, the hospital bed thing. There. That was the I, game. Yeah. Uh-huh. The last. Um, Man, if he does that in the Carrier Dome, he's going to be like way up there. Syracuse quarterback is out. Um, I don't know. I, I, I mean, do we think Liberty is really f- going to be a 5-0 and team? I mean, 4-0. Well, last up. week I wanted to take Syracuse as a, what, home dog against Duke, and that wouldn't have worked out for me. Here's the thing I saw. I can't remember who had this stat. So all these stats are stolen of somebody. I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to collect them all, but – an ACC home dog to a non-conference team. Normally, you think of it as a, it's probably a bigger, more premier team, but like ECU, yeah, yeah, against NC State or yep, North Carolina. That's it. Uh, but the ACC home dog 
to a non-conference team is only four and twenty-three straight up, seven and twenty against the spread. Obviously, Syracuse <clears throat> would be in that bad spot this week. So, um, I don't know. Liberty seems to be able to score. Syracuse hasn't really stopped very many people. It could be a fun little shootout. So, anything on Clemson Tech, Georgia Tech? That is, <sighs> I. I I mean, Clemson, the last two years with Trevor, has won, I think, 52-14 and 49-21. So, I, I don't see Tech being able to stop them. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's uh, surely hit our music, and we'll do a couple more. Kentucky, Tennessee. Tennessee, a six-point favorite. I think it's a bad spot for Tennessee there. I, I would lean Kentucky. They were in that game last it. week and just kept turning it over every time they got it in the second half. Yeah. Frustrating to watch. Uh, all right, our final game of this segment, Texas State, South Alabama. Got anything on that? No, I think you got to look at the over in that one, right? I mean, 58. Throw the records out when the Jaguars and Bobcats get together. But, I mean, well, both, those, both those offenses are, like, on – I mean, they're playing well this year and scoring points. So, but I don't know. USA's 8-3 and three against the spread last 11. We've been riding them for a little while. Uh, but I – Maybe a slight lean there, but I look for it to be a little bit of a high-scoring game. Kind of like USA there. Saturday you got to like there. USA. All right, let's uh, take a time out. That was a productive segment. We'll go through the rest of college football, talk NFL, try to get a NASCAR pick in as well. Here on Pirate Radio Live, more with Wager McGee after this. Hello, Pirate Nation. This is Representative John Bell, the Majority Leader of the North Carolina House, and it has been an honor serving the people of Eastern North Carolina in the last eight years. I've had the privilege of working with your local representatives, Dr. Perrin Jones and Chris Humphrey, as they delivered hundreds of millions of dollars in COVID relief funding to our small businesses, health care providers, and families right here in Pitt County. Unfortunately, their opponents are funded by radical, liberal, out-of-state donors that want to destroy our agriculture heritage, defund the police, and silence your voice by buying this election. This is not North Carolina. We cannot and will not let this happen. Dr. Perrin Jones and Chris Humphrey are focused on solutions, not revolutions. They will make sure your voice is heard and represent our Eastern North Carolina values. So Pirate Nation, the choice is clear. On November 3rd, please support and vote for Dr. Perrin Jones and Chris Humphrey for the North Carolina House. Strong voices for Eastern North Carolina. Paid for by the John Bell Committee. Weekdays are a great time to visit North Carolina State Parks. The best time to learn about nature is to be able to look, listen, and feel its natural beauty. A visit to the North Carolina State Parks is perfect for homeschoolers, scout groups, and teachers looking for a fun field trip during the week. You'll be amazed at all the natural wildlife you'll see when you experience the beauty of each North Carolina State Park. Visit ncparks.gov to get all the information on the closest park near you. Hello, this is Michael McGraw from Orthopedics East and Sports Medicine Center of Greenville. We offer a variety of services including arthroscopic surgery, sports medicine, carpal tunnel and general orthopedics, fracture care, total joint replacement, physical therapy, and on-site MRIs. For experienced and professional medical care, visit our office on WH Smith Boulevard in Greenville and online at orthoeast.com. Orthopedics East providing services to ECU and Pitt County Athletics for over 35 years. Go Pirates! Love Jersey Mike subs? Love them times 12 with our new catering box. Packed full of a dozen individually wrapped subs. They're yours for the sharing. Jersey Mike's. Be a sub above. It's Jersey Mike's time. One Club Supreme? Check. What's Aaron's way? Only $2.99 for Pepsi and Lay's? I'm in. Order your sub Aaron's way on the Jersey Mike's app or visit a Jersey Mike's store. 2020 certainly hasn't been the year many of us were hoping for, but one thing has stayed the same. I'm Tim Sutton with Greenville Auto World, and our commitment to our customers has never wavered. Let Greenville Auto World show you how easy it is to buy a quality used car in Greenville. We believe in fair prices, superior service, and treating customers right leads to satisfied repeat buyers. Your vehicle is a big investment, and our customers trust us to keep them up and running with outstanding service and value. With Greenville Auto World, cross some hardies at Bells Ford.
I'm Michael Vaughn with East Coast Grading and Utilities. Many of you know my dad, David Vaughn, and his work in putting in subdivisions all over Pirate Nation. But East Coast Grading and Utilities is not just for those type of big jobs. We're here for the homeowners. Whether it's concrete, driveways, hauling rock or sand, whatever you need, East Coast Grading and Utilities can get the job done. Call us at 252-531-7494 or check us out on Facebook at East Coast Grading and Utilities. It's bow time. The barbecue sandwich from Bojangles is back. Wait, wait, Bojangles has barbecue? Yeah, keep going. Well, okay then. <clears throat> We're talking tender pulled pork with a tangy Carolina vinegar kick. Unforgettably topped with our country coleslaw, all on perfectly toasted buns. So if you're like me and missed it last time, get your hands on a barbecue sandwich combo pronto. It's bow time. <laughs> This is former ECU baseball player and mayor of Greenville, P.J. Connolly, and you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of Pirate Nation. You're listening to Hour One of Pirate Radio Live. Now, back to the show. Welcome back. Now is the perfect time for a review of your home, auto, and life insurance with a trusted and experienced agent. Call ECU grad Brandon Manning with Farm Bureau Insurance at 531-1812. Brandon's clients always have his cell phone number and is available before or after business hours. Call Brandon today at 531-1812 to schedule a review and get a free quote. Now let's head back in to Pirate Radio Live. Here's your host, Cliff Ron. All right, going over the football slate with Wade Major McGee here on a Wednesday edition of Pirate Radio Live. Got Kevin Monroe joining us coming up in hour number two. Get his thoughts on the win last week and the Navy matchup coming up on Saturday. Uh, Wager, your favorite play we've talked about so far would be the over tomorrow night? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, between, um, remind me again, who's playing? Georgia State oh, and yeah. Arkansas your State. Your team. Yeah. The Panthers. And I would say of the early... I was thinking about it, trying to do early sides so far. Uh, probably BC plus the 12 and a half, although I really okay. like SMU minus the six and a half on Friday, too. All right, uh, let's continue on the slate of games. 130 on Saturday, Western Kentucky at UAB. Western Kentucky. Each week, we talk the worst. Who who do they have photos of that they, what is that number? It's, it's realistic 14. this week, maybe, right? 13? 14. I mean, last week, the Marshall game, we, we looked at that one. They're 0-4 against the spread, and, and their numbers are off by more than, except for MTSU when they were seven-point favorites. So I'm going with UAB. I mean, they're off. They're rested. They played UTSA two weeks ago. Western's just off a Marshall game, and I don't think any – somebody really expects them, expected them to be a lot better than what they are. So I'd like UAB there. Ole Miss and Arkansas. And Ole Miss is a one and a half point favorite. Ole Miss could not be stopped against Bama last week. Arkansas a lot friskier than people thought. Maybe heading into this year, seventy five and a half total in this game. This is a horrible spot for Lane Kiffin, right? I mean, I know you said was it mean he had circled that game last year? Last week was everything uh, for well, him. Okay, it's been him right. for three, but he's not actually out there playing. He's he's making calls. They got a ton of talent on offense. I got to give you credit for that call last week. You liked Ole Miss plus the points. Yeah, and I mean, and I kept waiting and see if it was going to rain. So luckily, it didn't rain. So we got to, we got treated to a nice little shootout. <sighs> I don't. I mean, Arkansas. They're way ahead of where I think everybody thought that maybe the Georgia offensive line coach is now head coach Pittman is good. They're three and zero against the spread. They've already beaten Mississippi State when they were a big dog there. I think what's the number? Uh, one and a half Mississippi. Oh. I really, I'm not going to be surprised if Arkansas wins in a shootout. Maybe it'll be like the four years ago when it's fifty three, fifty two in overtime. Um, but I, Lane's great at covering spreads now. He's I mean, Ole Miss is on a 10-4 and one run, leaned at FAU and Ole Miss. Now it's 12-5 and five against the spread. But after Bama, I think this is just a horrible spot for him. So. All right, A&M, Mississippi State, the Bulldogs put up two points last week. Do they bounce back against Texas A&M this week? I, right after the game, Leach said he's probably going to have to clean house. I mean, you're two games off of beating the defending national champions, and you throw it's always somebody else's fault for Leach. That is true. You, you lock him in a dark closet Fat and let him friends. get over that concussion. 
I, I think it's already done for him at Mississippi State. I love A and M in this game. Oh, wait, so, what? <laughs> you just it. said it. Wait, it's already done. It's already done. He's you just said, done. You, you said it's two games in. Three. I know he's three days. He's done. It'll never work. He wins one big game. He's done. <laughs> All right. Wait, let me look at the schedule. I don't know if Mississippi State will win another game this year. Wow. Bold you throw your players prediction. under the bus and say, "I think it's time for me to get rid of all you losers." It's not my fault. We had you ready to go. They got A and M off week. Bama. They play Vandy at home. Auburn at Georgia. Ole Miss. Missouri. Okay, I know the SEC. Well, it's just they don't have to play everybody. He didn't play. I didn't say Kentucky and Tennessee there. Well, they've already played Kentucky. They were horrible. I watched that game because I thought they'd bounce back from the Arkansas game. See, you're mad at them because you had them. I am. Okay. This is hate, I understand. This that. is hate speech too. But <laughs> this is hate speech. That was the worst team I think I've watched in a little bit that I've watched. Well, they scored two football. points. Yeah, you can't get much worse than that. They didn't. That means somebody scored for them. Scored the two points for them. Oh well. Yeah, that's true. Bet your house on Texas a and What, six and a half? Wow, okay. All right, Cincinnati-Tulsa. I, 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 Cincinnati minus three. Blind take it. You know I'm on the Tulsa bandwagon. I love that Tulsa team. They had a week off after UCF. Last week, last year after they beat UCF, I'd have to find So my... the letdown spot is out the window if you have an off week in between your big win? I think that I think it helps. It, it allows you all those extra interview times and stuff like that. And how about a brutal schedule too? Oklahoma Tulsa. State, oh yeah, uh, UCF, and now Cincinnati. That's what I'm saying. Factor all that in when you're looking at how good this team is. It, I mean, how far they might be ahead of where they were supposed to be. Uh, how long? Nah. I mean, they beat they beat UCF last week last year. Turned around and they were a little bit flat against Houston, but then they they turned around and beat uh, East Carolina after that. So. Yeah. That doesn't mean anything. I think in the development, I don't know. I haven't been in, that impressed with Cincy offense. I kind of like taking the points. Okay. UCF minus three and a half against Memphis. This sounds fun. 73 and a half total. One last thing for Cincy. They're only three and six. His uh, last nine is a road favorite. So they're not great in that spot, too. And, okay. and uh, Tulsa's five and one. Last six is a dog. So try to throw out some real numbers, not just our that we hate teams and that's why we're going against them. I kind of like the hate speech more yeah. than real numbers. <laughs> well, then here's the perfect one. Which don't you hate UCF on this side? I don't. It's Memphis second game, right? I mean, they've only played well, no third. They played the game and then they took 5 weeks off they and then they were SMU. flat at SMU awful second half. Um just go over here. You would think Is UCF too many? I, I, I should I should have kept my book out there to see what UCF did last year after they lost to Tulsa because they're in that same spot. Memphis is off a loss. You would think and Memphis is not going to be. I, I, I know UCF owns the series. They're two one and one against the spread. They haven't lost to them. Every other one has been you know fifty six forty one sixty fifty five. It should be a fun entertaining game. What's the number? <clears throat> the total seventy three and a half. Uh, UCF minus three and a half. Yeah, I might take the home dog and take the over. Army is a seven and a half point favorite against UTSA. I'm kind of on board with this little UTSA team. They played last year. Went look, so they're eight and one. Their last nine is the dog. They played at UTSA last year. Uh, the game was thirty one thirteen. I look immediately look at yards and time of possession. It was thirty thirty time of possession. So they were able to stop Army, get them off the field. Army scored a late touchdown with a minute left, or it would have been a really close game. It's just a horrible spot for UTSA. But Army's been flat the last couple of weeks, so I kind of like the points in the under, 49.5. I hate saying I like an under, but that's I, I think this is an under game. All right, I'll never take Louisville again. 16.5-point uh, dogs against Notre Dame, 64.5 total. I kind of like them plus the points here in the over. I'm just not All sure. Right. I mean, Notre Dame so far, we they got Duke in week one when we weren't sure what Duke was. They played USF, who we don't think is very good, and they play Florida State. I don't. They haven't really played anybody. Louisville is going to be able to run at it, score. They played last year, 35-17. Pretty good. I, I, I mean, anyway, I, I kind of like the points. Love the over here. I think Notre Dame just seems to be a, a throw and over team, and Louisville does too. Anything on north versus middle? I... I for you novices out there, that's North Texas and Middle Tennessee State. Yeah, North is now on a as we it's our hundred point team is now on a five and twenty against the spread the last twenty five games. Who did they play last week? Do you remember? Oh, uh, they got beat by Charlotte last week. Oh, I didn't end up. What was the uh, total? Did it go over? No, I think it okay. stayed under because Charlotte doesn't want to play fast and, no, and North wasn't going to help. Um, 
And North is 0-9 against the spread of the last nine in the road. Now, Middle likes to play high-scoring games, right? Middle just likes to play. But any. they don't like to score. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. It, it's this is this will be a fun right, game. I'm staying, away. I'm staying away. It's like the white elephant of games here. You're not really sure what you're going to get in this thing. It may look like it's going to be pretty good. It's like the size of the package may look okay, and you pull it out, and it's going to be like a hat from a convenience store. So, all right, the white elephant game of the week. I think if new, new if one. North will show up and score some, we know that this could be a 70 or 80 point game. I just don't know if they're going to be able to, and they're not going to be able to cover because they don't on the road. So. FIU at Charlotte. Charlotte a seven point favorite, fifty three and a half total. Man, we're getting really we're getting really comfortable with Charlotte being a good team. I, it seems like they're overvalued here, even though they've played as well as they have. I mean, FIU has won five straight in the series. They've, I mean, they don't even have to cover the five straight of wins. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I, Charlotte is good as a dog. I think it's one of these things like Philip Rivers. They're going to be good as a dog. I'm not sure. That they're good as a favorite, we're gonna see. But I kind of like FIU plus the uh, plus the seven, seven and a half. Marshall is really good. They're good. Thirteen and a half point favorites on the road at Louisiana Tech. Man, Skip is he's twenty and nine as a dog. It's a good skip spot. Yeah, <clears throat> but they struck. I think they were probably a look ahead last week against UTEP because they were not very impressive in that game, but. I like Marshall. We just, I mean, I think we were on them a little bit last week against Western. They're 3 0 against the spread. They seem to be able to play any style they want, right? 17 7, App State, 38 14 last week, 59 0. They're good. And if they win this, I mean, can they be in the playoffs as the best group of five team? <laughs> no. Uh, Southern Man, <laughs> minus six and a half at UTEP. Don't want anything to do with it. And finally, the headliner, Alabama, a six-point favorite against Georgia. Total is 56.5. That total jumped up. I don't know what it opened at, 49 or something like that, and people just laughed at that number and bet it as much as they could. Um, I, the last eight times Alabama has been a favorite of seven or less, they're three and five straight up and one and seven against the spread. Hmm. They're secondary. They got another guy injured. They're starting some true freshmen. They can't stop anybody. Everybody in the SEC is in the bottom five in the country in pass defense because they're racing. East Carolina's ahead of all those teams. Yeah. I just saw that stat this week. Yep. Yeah. It's a pretty pretty comparable opponents, I think. So I don't I, I mean Georgia State. I mean one of the best State. offensive teams in the land. <laughs> so you're, you're saying one. you're taking Georgia here? I think dogs in the over. Yeah. I think wow. dogs in the I, I don't I mean, if somebody doesn't score, it's going to be Alabama because Georgia's defense is good. Alabama's defense can't stop anybody. They got to outscore anybody they play. And then, I mean, the, the dogs are seven and two. The last nine is a SEC road team. I mean, struggled a little bit to begin with against Arkansas, but they were comfortable there. A Tennessee game, they they turned it over and, and gave them some points, and then they just blew them out. I, I mean, they they controlled the Auburn game. Not very tough to do. This will be the best defense offense they played. It will be a fun game. It's a real. And Georgia probably does have the best defense in the country. Alabama's got arguably the best offense. But Alabama's secondary is bad. So as long as the walk on can throw the ball to some people, over and Georgia. Man, I think Georgia can get in the thirties. All right, your favorite college games as we sit here on Wednesday: Georgia State, Arkansas State over on Thursday night. So like Georgia State plus the points there. Also, you said BC plus the number against Virginia Tech. Uh, what were your other favorites? I like SMU. Oh, Texas A&M. Texas A&M is the college lock oh, of the year. The, Let's just call that against the team that the coaches. fading Mississippi State. Yep. Mississippi State's done. Mike Leach will never win yep. at Mississippi State. North Carolina team total because Florida State can't block or tackle anybody. So as long as Carolina can complete a pass, they'll get into the 40s. And I don't think their team total is going to be that high. I, okay. I, uh, over in Bama. I think we just keep saying over in Bama the entire time. All right. Uh, let's move on to the NFL before we take a timeout. We might uh, finish early today. Wait, and we got extra time, too. I know. Na- 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 time? We'll use the extra time <laughs> to our advantage. All right. Uh, no Thursday night football, but there is Sunday football. And the Carolina Panthers are 3-2, three and two, won three in a row, home favorites against the Bears on Sunday. Rotating here. I like the Panthers. <sighs> Mostly because I don't like the Bears. Yeah, I, I, 
I mean, we loved the Panthers last week. That was an easy spot there. I don't like the Bears, but I don't think this is a great spot for Carolina either. Bears are going to have a couple extra days of rest being on that Thursday night game. Also, Chandler, uh, Panthers is a favorite, which you were saying against Atlanta. But in general, Panthers is a favorite. It's not a good thing, right? You'd rather, you'd rather be the underdog. Um, they are a favorite in this game. Yeah, I, I, if it gets above three, I think you got to I – mean, I think you got to take the Bears plus the points there. I thought blind betting Panthers overs would be a thing, but their defense has been pretty competent the last yeah. few weeks. Oh, hey, since we're talking about, and these are one o'clock windows, I saw this today. So, uh, why well, I, I love overs as much as I do. The 1 p.m. window of NFL games, 42 games so far, 30 overs, 12 unders. Wow. So the overs are at 71.5%. But then the refs have started calling penalties again this week. So, uh, Trying to give everybody COVID by calling penalties during the game, <laughs> extra huddle time. Um, I, I don't care. Can Carolina? You love conspiracies. Is there like a referee CDC conspiracy out there? Somebody floating around. They're all doing steroids these days. If you've noticed the all those every single ref now, they come out with a tight. They got the tight ref shirt on and all bulked up. Hey, and, and interestingly enough, one of the refs that opted out was Hockley's kid, right? Yeah. So now so. they're like, yeah. hey, we're taking over. Here's an interesting question for you on Carolina. Being that they're 3-2 and two now and the way that NFC is favored, they could be 4-2. and two. Are they potentially looking ahead to New Orleans the following week? Could we catch the Panthers on a look ahead Chandler, as a home favorite? Chandler, are you looking ahead to uh, New Orleans next week? That is a huge game. No, I hope not. I mean... I hope we're focusing it on this week. Did you know you were playing but, New Orleans next week? You personally? Yes. Uh oh. He's looking Here's the thing. Teddy Bridge <laughs> you got me. I gotcha. You gotta think Teddy Bridgewater and Joe, whatever offense coordinator or speak or looking peeking ahead wow, just really a little bit. Really disrespecting Joe Brady. Huh? But go ahead. Joe Brady, yeah. Yeah. What is it? It, you know, Brady, it's not a easy football name to remember. <laughs> yeah, well how would you know that? Yeah. But besides the Bucks, I mean the biggest target on the back of a NFC South team is probably the Saints. So hopefully they're not looking past this game, but here you go. After Wager just is obsessed with looking ahead. I think 2020 is a big... We're all looking ahead to 21, right? Trying to make it there. Trying to survive to get there. Yeah, it's the biggest look-ahead year ever. After this game, (laughs) uh, your Carolina Panthers at New Orleans, Atlanta on a quick Thursday turnaround, at Kansas City, Tampa at home. Ooh. Those four games. I'll I mean, tell you what, if you're the Panthers, you better focus on this one because you might not be getting a win. You better. Well, the Falcons. And I would say, I remember that. It was, I think Bridgewater's maybe second start last year with New Orleans when people were still like, oh, he's not that good. They went to Chicago and dominated that game, scored like 30 something points. So, probably got some confidence coming out of that. And I don't think the Chicago defense is as good as what people think. What's the uh, McCaffrey status? Is he out this week? Uh, I'm not sure. I haven't seen anything. I mean, it was three to six weeks. Um, Mike Davis has been this awesome. This is going to be him. his fourth game out if he stays out this week. And so. they're undefeated. He needs to stay out. If the Same thing. He's the better. Devontae Adams of uh, <laughs> Carolina. They just The main cogs leave, and they, they find a way to win. All right, so him. no strong feeling either way on this game is what you're saying. No, it just seems like a dog in the NFL is the way to go there, especially if it gets above three and a half. And but. take every over. So take over. Uh, everything at one o'clock. Just everything. Everything's better with an over. Detroit at Jacksonville. What an <laughs> awful game. God, this is terrible. Uh, they're both at the bye. I mean, Detroit's off a bye. So what we're about to see with Detroit and Green Bay is, it, it, again, I think buys are going to be a lot more crucial this year as well, right? We had Tennessee off a of COVID buy and Pittsburgh off a of COVID buy already, and they both won straight up and covered. So we got teams that had a buy already this year, 2-0, and just because of the lack of preparation. Did the guys get in, do things too quick, get injured, little nagging injuries. Detroit's come and rested, and Jacksonville the last two weeks has crashed. I know because I've had them in the contest, and they haven't been. Any, they De- can't punch it in against the Bengals or the Texans. Detroit first half, because you can trust them early in a game, but not late. If Galladay's healthy, I mean, the, the Jags are not going to be able to. I'm just trying to find some red stuff. I mean, both of them are bad. Both the, the Detroit's giving up. 32 points a game and the Jags are giving up 29 points a game so in one o'clock window the easiest thing will be over, over. but Minshew can't get in the end zone these days so 0-3 oh, against the spread last three for Jacksonville that, that uh, shine went off the, the Jacksonville thing pretty quick and they're off next week they're looking ahead to some beach time as we go to break Shirley um, Atlanta at Minnesota 
Minnesota is one and four, and they are three and a half point home favorites against Atlanta, who are trying to do the uh, like Houston did last week. You fire your coach and you win. Can Atlanta do that this week? I like that they made their defensive coordinator, Raheem Morris, the head coach. Because that side of the ball has been great. <laughs> well, and Raheem, remember, that he also off the sterling performance as uh, as head coach of Tampa Bay, where he went 17-31 and 31 over a three-year span. So, What was his weird underwear line he had? I mean, we might have that saved. I'll have somebody look it up. Uh, anything on Vikings, Falcons? I love the Vikings. Okay. Why not? I mean, just keep fading the Falcons. I, if Julio's not playing, I, I mean, Minnesota... Really, the last three weeks, you want to talk about like? Hey, I, I've got it here. We we're going to talk about it real quick. Um, we're definitely not going to do anything real quick. Okay, all right. Then. But Minnesota we're last do it very slowly. Last three weeks has turned things around. They could be three and zero straight up. They've they've turned and saved the season. If you look at strength of schedules, saved the season. They just lost, uh, uh, blew a lead against Seattle. They've turned things around. Remember, they had a new offensive coordinator. This is like this was going to be a. This was going to be a work in progress. Right. Look at their schedule versus everybody else, too. Green Bay, Colts there when the Colts were at Tennessee, Houston, okay. at Seattle. It's hard to say they saved the season with, by losing a game last week. They're going to be in the playoff race at the end of the year. All right. And with Kirk Cousins, that is where you want to be. Dalvin Cook. Be playing let's the, just say, yeah, it, Dalvin Cook is out for this game, right? But Madison came in, and Madison's like averaging five yards a carry, which okay. is like, whatever, 10th in the league or this something like that. This is hate speech. So. You hate the Falcons. You're betting against the Falcons. We all know that. Falcons are horrible. Everybody knows that. So, But <laughs> if they ever got like 15 points against the Jets, I would take them. But in this spot with the Vikings, no. Okay. All right, let's take a timeout. We'll come back more NFL Sunday. Can't wait to break down Washington and Giants. We'll do that after this. It's a story that started in a community like ours. Cal Cunningham grew up in Lexington, where church youth groups working at the local brickyard in McDonald's shaped his life. And now Cal's running a different kind of campaign for the U.S. Senate. I'm Cal Cunningham. I want my service in the U.S. Senate to be about listening and going places where Democrats don't always go. That's what I learned growing up in Lexington, where we don't check voter registration before taking care of our neighbors. We believe in hard work and service, just like the soldiers I served with overseas. Cal Cunningham volunteered after 9-11, a lieutenant colonel in the Army Reserve who served three tours and took on corrupt government contractors. And Cal will take on the corruption in Washington that's been rigging the system for the drug and insurance companies. That's why Cal's not taking corporate PAC money, because he believes the top 1% don't need more favors. It's regular folks who need a voice. He'll be a senator on our side. I'm Cal Cunningham, and I approve this message. Paid for by Cal for NC. Hey, Pirate Nation, this is Tom Brown from Brown and Wood Buick GMC Truck. We've been serving the Pirate Nation in eastern North Carolina for 83 years. We have four brands, three generations, two showrooms, and one goal to make sure you leave a happy customer. This month at Brown and Wood, get an all-new 2020 Buick Enclave and save over $9,500 off. As always, Brown and Wood is the home of the lifetime warranty. We're located on Greenville Boulevard next to the Convention Center or shop us online at brownandwoodauto.com. At Tiebreakers, we pride ourselves on serving big, big juicy wings. wings. I'm talking big and juicy. Our chickens are the same ones that kick sand in the other chickens' faces. If our chickens played football, they'd be linebackers. The competition's chickens, they'd be skinny little kickers. Trade those kickers in for linebackers. Tiebreakers is open every day at 11 a.m. Follow Tiebreakers on Facebook and Instagram for daily updates. In studio with Gloria from Kinetic Physical Therapy, what kind of wellness services do you guys offer? We have massage therapy with your choice of either a relaxation massage, a therapeutic stretching session, or a prenatal massage. We have foot reflexology. We partner with Pirate Cryo for cryotherapy, also known as cold therapy, and we have health and wellness coaching. And if you're interested in holistic body therapy and saving money, we encourage you to check out our wellness membership plan where you can have all of our wellness services at a constant discounted price. You can learn more today at kptonline.com. 
With rates being historically low, now is the best time to buy or refinance your home. This is Talbot Green with Angel Oak Home Loans. Now is the time to take advantage of the opportunity to buy more home or refinance your current mortgage. The combination of our local team's experience and Angel Oak's wide offerings of products from standard conventional, government, and portfolio loans has something for most financial situations. For more information, call Talbot Green, Joanne Weir, or Wanda Hager at 751-2060. NMLS 1719250 and 685-8. For two. Equal housing lender. It's time to get back in the saddle with Rocking Horse Ranch. Join us Saturday, November 14th for an evening filled with games and prizes to support the reopening of the Rocking Horse Ranch Therapeutic Riding Program. Rocking Horse Ranch provides a fun and unique therapy program to our special needs, cancer, and veterans community. The horses miss their favorite students and can't wait to see them again soon. And Rocking Horse cannot do this without you. Join us November 14th to get back in the saddle or visit rhrnc.com for more information. Temperatures are in the low 30s at 10 a.m., increasing sharply to 75 degrees by 1 p.m., and then dropping into the teens by 10 p.m. So before you go to work, put on some gloves, pack some shorts, and a parka that should cover you for the day. Your heating and cooling is taking a beating. Guarantee your family's comfort all fall and winter with a new train system. It's hard to stop a train. For a limited time, get a new train system with 0% financing for 60 months. Go to DelcorInc.com for more information. Delcor, the service professionals. See your independent train dealer for details. Call one 888 for details. This is Big John Williams, strength and conditioning coach for East Carolina football, and you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to Hour One of Pirate Radio Live. Now, back to the show. Welcome back. The best investment you can make is in yourself. Get educated and make prudent decisions about your financial future. Contact David Dom at Carolina Wealth Management today at 439-1344 for a free consultation. Now, let's head back in to Pirate Radio Live. Here's your host, Clip Rock. Going over the college and NFL slate with Wager McGee. Got Kevin Monroe joining us next hour. Also, C. Austin Cox from... AAC Daily to talk some ECU and Navy. And at 5 o'clock, Bryce Williams and the voice Jeff Charles will join us here on Pirate Radio Live as we join you here on this Wednesday. All right, let's uh, continue on the NFL slate. So the Titans are playing Sunday? Yeah. All right, just played last night, just one. They are three and a half point favorites against Houston. If they didn't play last night, would this number be bigger? I I think. I no. thought the send out was like five and a half, but um, so it may just be that it's it's adjusted a little bit. Some all the guys out with the, you know with COVID that they're still missing. Will they be back? And also, it's a I mean that's a quick turnaround. So that's very a, quick. Um, that being said, I still like them because I mean the it, the difference in red zone being able to punch things in. So after last night, because Tennessee was six of six in the red zone. I mean they got some they got some short fields gifted to them, but they're second in the league behind Seattle right now and converting in red zone to 82 percent and i mean you can't take them away but if you do take away all the garbage time kansas city week one red zone scores that that houston had you know, they're down at about 40 percent which means they're only better than the the jets and the giants at punching the ball in inside the 20 because they got no run game they really don't have they don't have hopkins they don't have threats so i like uh i like the titans man i just think it, uh, i like the titans anyway overall for the season but uh Quick turnaround, but I like them over over what Houston's doing with that offense. And I think that you know that one week bump that some people will say you get, even though it's not there in the, against the spread, they proved right. The, the Titans are like, okay, see, it was the coach's fault. We're good now. We can back to being back to being a bad team this week. So I think uh, I think Titans win, especially if they get all their guys back this week. All right, big NFC East showdown: Washington Football Team at New York Giants. We saw that. Alex Smith, as good as ever at checking the ball down with his repaired leg. Uh, Kyle Allen getting the start. Brandon Sheriff practicing this week. That is big news for the Washington offensive line. He's their only good offensive lineman. Uh, The Giants are two-and-a-half-point favorites in this game in New York. Now, the Giants did wake up and score points last week. They did. But it was against Dallas. I know, I know. But at least they felt like, hey, we might be a competent football team. Yeah, and they got some turnovers there. I would say I think the Giants have played 
competitive in some tough games, right? They they were they hung in there early in week one against Pittsburgh. You know, almost beat the Bears in week two without Barkley uh, in there, and then. I think they have one really the flat Rams. Game. They hung around with the Rams. Didn't they hung around with the Rams. The really only bad game was San Francisco, which oh, yeah. was a surprising one because that was it was without any, all the backups for San Francisco, and then hung around with Dallas and really probably should have won that game. Let Andy Dalton beat them, but right, <laughs> neither one of these teams should be a favorite. I'm, I'm surprised it's not a pick. There's really not a home field advantage. I, I mean, if it gets to three, I think you got to take the Washington team plus three, right? I don't know. You can't lay points in this game. There's no way. Yeah. Now they I remember they played last year and Haskins had a horrible game. What? Like, yeah. That is shocking. And it was like seventeen to six. Also or shocking that I saw that no team has called uh <laughs> with trade inquiry in, inquiries for Dwayne Haskins. It's I shocking. saw an interesting rumor today that maybe if the Falcons just decide to go ahead and tank that they unload Matt Ryan to old Kyle Shanahan offense coordinator that took him to the Super Bowl. Oh, to San Francisco? San Francisco, yeah. Nice. Call Shannon, sorry. And it wasn't clear on that. Never am. No, nah, well, I get it, but we were not talking about them at all. We were talking about Washington. Well, we're talking about quarterbacks. I think there's going to be, I don't know when the trade deadline is. It's coming up soon. I think there's going to be a lot of quarterbacks that kind of move and stuff, and San Francisco clearly needs one. So I wanted a Haskins for Le'Veon Bell trade, and neither one of them are going to be good anymore, but hmm. I wouldn't, I, you know. All right, uh, Cleveland, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, three and a half point favorite. I, that I seems mean, low. Um. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you know, what I mean what Cleveland is doing right now, I think is is probably factoring in there a little bit. But I, it, Pittsburgh owns that series there. They're, I mean, it, not spread, but they're sixteen and zero the last sixteen at home against Cleveland. I don't know if I believe in Cleveland yet because I think there were a lot of holes with that that Colts team. Baker got banged up a little bit and struggled after that part. Um, I love the over 51 in this game because I think both teams are going to throw it. And with Pittsburgh now having Claypool that stretches the field out middle and he's such a big... Who's I mean, that guy? Yeah. I mean, they're just... I mean, they're not even using their main offensive pass weapons and they're not even really running it that much. You know, Ben's getting a little bit more comfortable every single time. But again, after Baker got banged up last week, they had five drives in the second half. It was interception, punt, punt, interception, field goal. Nothing was longer than five plays. Nothing was longer than 40 yards. I think Cleveland's just bad. They got really up for the Dallas game, right? All of them had a point to prove there. And then they were like, well, you can't do it against the Colts. And they got really up for the Colts game. I don't see them doing it this week. And I've already seen what they did last week. And this is the Rudolph uh, helmet against the head game. Yeah. Revenge game. Do they send Mason Rudolph out for the coin flip? Why not? With his helmet off (laughs) as a show of we're, we're not scared. I like Pitt. I think Cleveland's got it. This is the prove it game to me. It wasn't last week because Rivers is just done as a quarterback. He's as done as, as Matt Ryan and Drew Brees, as everybody says. So uh, I, I like Pitt minus the three and a half, and I love the over 51 um, since these two teams are just throwing the ball all around there. All right. The Eagles are seven, seven and a half point underdogs every week. That trend continues this week against Baltimore. I. You got to check the injury report with the Eagles every single week. I was impressed. They played hard last week, though, and they played hard the week before that. Even though they didn't, they didn't do a lot on offense. They really kind of won on defense. Last week, defense couldn't stop you know Pittsburgh's attack, but the Bengals. I mean, the, you know, the Bengals kind of kept turning the ball over to the Ravens. Ravens' offense just didn't do a whole lot. They've been struggling for a couple weeks now since KC. They even struggled in that game. That's a lot of points for them to be laying. To again, the Eagles. Uh, when I look at it, I kind of like the Eagles in this game. I do too. I was trying to. Think, I think they're the schedule. It's almost like what we were talking about with Carolina, right? If they can somehow get by this game, I mean, they may even lose. But then they go Giants, Dallas, off Giants, Cleveland. They get on a run where I think if you're the Eagles, you look at it and say, "There's a path for us to win, you know, seven, eight games here, and maybe win the division." I think they play hard. I kind of like them plus the points. All right, let's take a time out. Are we? Are you going to do the extra time with us? Sure, we can do that. All right, we'll yeah. we'll, uh, we'll come back. We'll kick off hour number two at four fifteen. We will talk to Kevin Monroe, but we have some more games to discuss with Wager McGee. Let's do one as we take a break. Bengals at Colts. Colts minus seven and a half. Too many points. Yeah, that's a quick one. I don't. I, I mean, Colts offense is really bad. I, I I thought the Bengals plus 14 last week. It's really the same game they had last week, right? And Colts aren't going to score a lot of points. That's a lot of points for them to lay. Backdoor Burrow. I like them plus seven and a half. 
I can get behind. It's one o'clock window, so maybe right. somehow it finds a way to get over. All right, let's take a time out. Come back. Hour number two of Pirate Radio Live is on the way after this. Hey guys, are you tired of tagging along with your wife or your girlfriend when you need a pedicure or manicure? Do you feel intimidated being the only guy in a female nail salon? If so, then I have the solution for you. The Man Cave is now open. I'm Amanda and I've opened the Man Cave to give men a spot just for them and for their grooming needs. Come relax in our comfortable masculine atmosphere and enjoy some free drinks and snacks during your nail service. The Man Cave, next to Lighting by Design on Fire Tower Road in Greenville. Get your ice cold Bud Light, Bud Light Seltzer here. Even though you can't go to the game, doesn't mean the game can't be brought to you now, hip. Just go to BudLight.com slash delivery. That's BudLight.com slash delivery. Give me two bagels. Coming at you. It's a little short. Ow. Sorry. You know what? I'm just going to walk them over to you. Whenever there's a game to watch, there's a Bud Light there. Enjoy responsibly. Heiser Bush, Bud Light Beer and Bud Light Seltzer, IRC Beer, Beer in Texas, St. Louis, Missouri. May 2020. A riot erupts in downtown Greenville. Small businesses are looted. The county courthouse windows are smashed. American flags are torn down and burned. Liberal State House candidate Brian Farkas refused to condemn the violence. Instead, Farkas attacked our police by calling for a radical statewide oversight committee that would bypass our local elective sheriff and district attorney. Farkas even took a $5,400 donation from a group which explicitly seeks to defund our local police at a time when we need them most. State Representative Dr. Perrin Jones has taken a different approach. He's working with Democrats and Republicans in Pitt County to institute meaningful reforms that protect victims of crime and the rule of law, all while honoring those who put their lives on the line for us every day. I'm Dr. Perrin Jones, and I'll stand up for our police here in Pitt County and across North Carolina. Dr. Perrin Jones for State House, paid for by supporters of Perrin Jones. There have been many changes in the automotive world. At Phelps Chevrolet, the Phelps boys are here to take care of you. Mike, Daryl, and four of Mr. Phelps' grandsons, Wade, Wes, Allen, and Clay. You see, things at Phelps remain the same. The Phelps team has served Eastern North Carolina for over 50 years. We make your visit easy and fun. We are your neighbors, and that's what neighbors do. Phelps Chevrolet in Greenville. Like Mr. Phelps' great-granddaughter says, come in and get you one. In studio today with Matlock, also known as Brad Evans to his friends and family. Why F3? F3 is a great way to work out, get in shape, but most importantly, F3 is a way to get together with other guys in the community, develop a great group of friends, uh, and have a good time doing it. What I'd tell people about F3 is don't be afraid to get up early in the morning to go work out. You can do it. One letter, one number, F3. Learn more today at F3ENC.com. Hey, welcome to Jack Brown's. Hey, can I get a cheeseburger and add lettuce and tomato? No, we don't have it. You can get some macaroni and barbecue chips on it, though. Greg Brady style. Or cream cheese and jalapeno jelly. Cobra Kai. Or bacon, a fried egg, and some cheese. Chiplet. <laughs> or just cheese, you know, like a cheeseburger. Cool. I'll take a Greg Brady with those new cheese fries you guys got. Sounds good. Oh, I forgot. Can I get us at a ranch? No! Jack Brown's, 805 Dickinson Avenue, Greenville. Hey, Pirate Nation, this is proud ECU graduate and former baseball player Brandon Manning inviting you to join my team at Farm Bureau Insurance. Right now, during hurricane season, is a good time to review your coverage with a local trusted agent like me. I will make myself available before or after business hours, and my clients always have my cell phone number if they need anything. From home, auto, or life, give me a call today and let's talk about your insurance coverage and about the Pirates. Call 531-1812 and go Pirates! This is Pirate Radio, WGHB Farmville, W224EI Greenville, WDLX Washington, and W281CH Washington. You're listening to Hour 2 of Pirate Radio Live. This hour of PRL is brought to you by Select Bank and Trust. Banking is banking until the service is not the same. Wouldn't you like to deal with a bank that is responsive to your needs, can make local decisions, and cares about you, the customer? Try Select Bank and Trust. Bank local. Bank select. Selectbank.com. 
Now, back to the show. Welcome back. Villa Verde on 10th Street and Villa Verde Dos by the hospital are open for you, serving unique and healthy dishes from the Dominican Republic. Order online at myvillaverde.com or the Villa Verde app. Order a family meal that feeds six to seven people, and they'll have it ready for curbside pickup today. Whether it's dine-in or takeout, Villa Verde is a platform for good. Now let's head back in to Pirate Radio Live. Here is your host, Clip Rock. All right, thank you, Shirley Rhodes. Got a few more minutes to go with Wager McGee here as we kick off hour number two. Got Kevin Monroe coming up at 415. And, uh, Shirley, you said you had a quick uh, news update at the Shirley Rhodes News Desk for us. What do you got? Well, I've got uh, several things. Of course, uh, the big news coming out, uh, the LSU-Florida game has been postponed. They are saying that the tentative rescheduled date is December 12th. So that's what we're looking at. Conference USA Championship has been moved from December 5th to Friday, December 18th. That allows for a couple of weeks for some of those teams to uh, make up some games, and Mm -hmm. that could potentially see an ECU Marshall game there. Mm -hmm. So we'll keep an eye on that. Ole Miss is experiencing some uh, COVID outbreak on the team. However, the game with Arkansas is still on as we speak. We'll keep an eye on that. The NCAA has voted to give an additional year of eligibility to win sports athletes no matter how much or how little anyone plays oh wow um and nfl news probably basketball uh, yeah okay uh that's what i'm i'm taking that as yeah uh a couple of uh, nfl notes the nfl pro bowl for 2021 has been officially canceled um josh hawkins damn it yeah. this is how i find out <laughs> josh hawkins of course uh worked out for the panthers yesterday we'll josh keep an hawkins. eye on that story and the panthers announced uh just a few minutes ago that defensive tackle kawan short is out for the season with ooh, a shoulder ooh, injury yeah. that is requiring surgery kk okay. short that's bad although they've been doing it with the uh the rookie guy is he a tackle or in chandler uh gross matos I believe oh gross matos is a defensive end he's played well who's the yeah oh, the he rookie. actually got banged up banged up in sunday's game so you got the rookie how's the rookie been playing pretty good Derek brown yeah yeah he's been pretty good i mean was hoping that he would be able to play alongside kwan short you know yeah. kwan short uh had the injury bug earlier in the season and now we lose him for the rest of the season so uh Derek brown will have to kind of um do it himself there in the middle but uh yeah so all right Thank you, Shirley, for that uh, cha- uh, wager. Let's get back to the games. Bengals, Colts we did. Let's do Packers. Back- oh, this is a good game. So this is probably the uh, the headliner on Fox Sunday afternoon. You would think. I mean, there's, there's Packers, two, Bucks. Yeah, especially now that the Rams in San Francisco isn't, isn't as big of a, a deal. I think there's two or three big games. Pitt, Cleveland, we already talked about. I mean, Green Bay coming off a bye. Devontae's supposed to – Adam's supposed to play. They're getting back two or three different guys – Tampa gets a couple extra days, but man, they're so banged up. That's all. It, what Green Bay is like, everybody they played has been without their number one receiver so far this season. So we'll see if that continues with Tampa. But a lean Green Bay on this at two, two and a half, and that line flipped from Tampa look ahead to three to, to Green Bay being favorite. But I mean, Green Bay right now and what Rodgers is doing, I think you got to lean that way versus the Brady offense. Rams, a a three-and-a-half-point favorite on the road at San Fran. San Fran coming off a bad loss. I keep telling you the Dolphins are feisty. Yeah. Although they might be giving away too many points this week. Uh, Rams, Niners. I mean, I lean Rams. This is one. That, I mean, this lane, this line moved six and a half from the the look at. You could last week you could have gotten Rams plus three. Now they're laying three and a half. But oh wow, adjusted offense value that they talk about. The Rams are the number one in the in the league regular ranked offense. They're number five, and San Francisco's twenty one. I assume C.J. Beathard is going to start this game for San Francisco. There, I think the under the quarterback is getting a lot of a lot of the attention there, which it should. Uh, because they may bench Garoppolo, who just took him to the Super Bowl. But the San Francisco secondary right now is as beat up and as bad as the Falcons secondary. That's their problem. I think Goff's just going to be able to pick them apart. I, don't know, I mean, San Francisco's 0-3 straight up against the spread The last it, it, when they haven't played the Jets or the Giants. I like the Rams. I wish it – I mean, it's moved a whole lot, but I think that's justified. All right, Jets, Dolphins. Ugh. Uh, nine and a half point favorites are the Dolphins. I can't believe that I'm going to do it, but I, th- I mean, you think you got to lay those points. <laughs> Jets are in full tank for it. Merrill, is, it's ironic, right? Because last year, Dolphins were 0 7. Everybody's like, they're tanking for two, oh, tanking yeah. for two. Jets went to Miami. 
and they beat them by eight. And that's what the line ended up, you know, open as. This time was the Dolphins minus eight. And all of a sudden, the Dolphins started playing well. Jets, I mean, Flacco, they're cutting Le'Veon. They're benching all, a lot of the young rookies. They traded everybody I, away. I saw on Twitter, I don't know how true it is, like Crowder's on the block. Like, they have big that's, names on the block. Yeah, that would be a, get, a big gift from somebody. Because I think if you look at him, you take him off the Jets, he's a top ten wide receiver in this league. So whoever can go out and get him is good. Jets Wait, are, what? Crowder? Look at his numbers. Stats. I know his numbers And then think about his situation. But they're like meaningless Jets numbers. Yeah, but which probably is like four times what it would be <laughs> if you were the number three, you All know, right. Zacharias with the Falcons. Uh, Jets 0-5 against the spread. They're 12-24-1 against the spread since the start of 18. Worst in the NFL. Jets allow 32 points a game, and it's only getting worse. Miami, surprisingly, has got the 10th best defense in the league and is starting to play better their points per game that they've allowed has gone down from 23 to 20 the last few games, and that's been against Seattle and San Francisco and what's the other game? Buffalo. I mean, their schedule has been a really tough schedule. New England, Buffalo, Seattle, and they're playing well in those games, getting better. You just hope it's a good Fitzpatrick, but if it is, hey, I don't know how Miami doesn't roll them by a couple of touchdowns. All right, real quick, Broncos, Patriots, anything on that? They're finally playing? No, maybe, and nothing. Okay. Uh, Cowboys... Oh, yeah. Uh, two, I was wondering why they were dogs at home because uh, the quarterback's out. Uh, but dogs at home against the Cardinals? I think that's adjusted too much. I, I mean, will take the Cowboys here. I, money I, line. I will, too. I hate saying that. I'm, I never really liked that. I saw today the Cardinals linebacker Chandler Jones, who has actually led the NFL in sacks with 97 since he came in the league in 2012, is out for the year with surgery. And we always talk about it in college. Remember, it's always my big deal about betting against teams that were playing their third straight road game. This is Arizona's third straight road game. Wow. And it's not easy travel. They went to Carolina, went back, went to New York. Jets, yeah. So they just played on that bad field with the Jets, too. And then they've got some guys banged up. They've been banged up the entire time. Is Dalton that big of a, a six-point drop? I mean, he was 9 of 11. You know what? Maybe just take the over. I don't I mean, I would take Dallas, too, though. I, I think I, mean, I hope I can get three. I don't think it's going to get to three in the contest. So this That's is Monday hoping. night. There's a Monday night doubleheader. Why do the Bills get to play on Monday night and the uh, Titans have to play on Sunday? I don't fair. know. They just moved off Thursday, so I guess they're they're giving them a prime time game. But I don't I don't know why it necessarily has to be that. So. Chiefs Bills three and a half. Uh, Chiefs are road favorites at Buffalo. I like the Chiefs on a bounce back, and the Bills. Bills can't run. They can't block anybody. And if they linebacker starting linebacker and cornerback that were out last night are out that's big losses for them i just like the the chiefs on a bounce back with two extra days of prep than uh, than the bills had and finally who do you like sunday in kansas in nascar i didn't know we would get to that so i didn't even look at the history to see if there's a horses for courses there um I mean, I, I you did like um, what'd you say nineteen and nine? Nineteen last week? nine on the road. So, I mean, nine just Elliott. dominates the uh, road course there. So I was hoping the eighteen would slide in there. It's a it's a sad day that uh, the Kyle Busch didn't advance to the next round. I, I mean, it's a mile and a half track, I guess. Right? Is that is Kansas? You're my NASCAR guy. I don't know. I'm not. I mean, mile Red and half. Beard, help! <laughs> Red Beard, help! <laughs> um, I mean, I you know, it's you're Kevin probably, Harvick. You're going to start probably with Harvick or Hamlin, but if it is, I mean, the the Penske cars ride really well on those tracks, I think. So, I mean, you could look at 22-2. and two. I just didn't – I'd have to pull up to see what happened last year. So no prep work on NASCAR this week because we haven't got to it. We went overtime 30 I, yeah. minutes. I'd had it last two weeks, and it's been, uh, it's been extra pages here of All notes right. that have just trashed. That's on me. All right. Well, if four wins, he's the champion because he's going to win at Phoenix. So somebody's got to knock him out this round so he doesn't get the Phoenix because hmm. he owns that track. All right. Wager, enjoyed it, man. Thanks enjoyed for hanging it. out. Thank enjoyed you. Enjoyed the uh, the chatter, and uh, good luck this week. Let's take a timeout. We'll come back. We will talk to former ECU defensive back, now the color analyst of the Pirates, Kevin Monroe. He joins us and says we go to break. John Moody, our backup NASCAR expert. Well, our code expert with Redbeard. Oh. Says Kansas is one and a half miles. Oh, Redbeard says that. Kansas one and a half miles. John Moody says I'm picking 19. So there's John Moody. Wow. Okay. Guest pick. I like it. All right. We'll take a time out. Come back. Kevin Monroe joins us after this. Hey, guys. 
guys, listen up. The next 30 seconds is very important because we have an announcement. Shimmer Boutique is your one-stop shop to make you look good and thoughtful. This is Ashley at Shimmer Boutique. We specialize in men's and women's apparel and also carry the biggest selection of local hats and jewelry. From Yetis to Hey Dudes, this is the place for you. Did I mention we also have free gift wrapping? Come check us out at our new location on Greenville Boulevard behind Starbucks. Shimmer is your one-stop shop for the whole family and we will always make your shopping experience easy and fun. Here with Mike Mullis from Fixed NC. And Mike, you were telling me the other day, people ask you all the time, I didn't know you did that. What does that mean? You know, anything that involves property damage repair, call us first. If it's your crawl space, you've got interior humidity issues, a water loss, your ice maker line breaks, obviously fire and smoke. Everybody knows we do those. But anything that involves interior or exterior property damage, we're your repair experts. Mike, how can everybody get in touch with you? 252-999-0001 or FixedNC.com. Let's turn a trip to the branch into a tap on your phone. Let's hit pause on a lost debit card without hitting pause on life. That's how First National Bank is redefining convenience with a top-rated mobile app that puts more security and control at your fingertips and friendly people to help you succeed right by your side. Let's get started at fnb-online.com or your local First National Bank. FNB member FDIC. You don't need a big meeting. You don't need a birthday. You don't need any excuse at all. You just need to love subs. Times 12. Order the Jersey Mike's catering box today. Jersey Mike's. Be a sub above. It's Jersey Mike's time. One Club Supreme? Check. What's Aaron's way? Only $2.99 for Pepsi and Lay's? I'm in. Order your sub Aaron's way on the Jersey Mike's app or visit a Jersey Mike's store. You know texting while driving is dangerous. That's not new information. Yet most people admit to doing it anyway. Drivers are 23 times more likely to be involved in a car accident while texting. Know the facts and wait to text. The danger is real and it applies to you. Auto Owners Insurance. The no problem people. Information provided by Virginia Tech Transportation Institute. This is Norm Bryant with Town Insurance in Greenville. Call me today at 756-8300. Go Pirates! White Claw Hard Seltzer. Discover a new wave of refreshment. Crafted using seltzer water, 5% alcohol, and a hint of fruit. Available in five fruit flavors, 2 grams of carbs, gluten-free, and 100 calories. Find it at whiteclaw.com. White Claw Hard Seltzer. Nothing tastes quite like it. Please drink responsibly. Hard seltzer with natural flavors. White Claw Seltzer Works, 2019 Chicago. Visit whiteclaw.com for full nutritional information. When you don't have time to go to lunch, let Jimmy John's deliver lunch to you. With Jimmy John's, we can get a freaky fresh sandwich to you freaky fast. Click to order at jimmyjohns.com. Dinner's great. It's one of your top three favorite meals. You just don't want to have to make it. Well, with Jimmy John's, you don't have to. Whether you live in a sandwich delivery zone or head into the store, you can always get a freaky fresh sandwich. Click to order at jimmyjohns.com. Every team knows that the two-point play can be a winning move. That's why I'm here. State Farm agent Timothy Sawyer and my team are here to help you go for two by combining your home and auto insurance. It's a great call that saves you time and money. So go for the win and score some savings by combining your home and auto. It's just another way we're here to help life go right. Call me, Timothy Sawyer, at 493-0002 today. Hey everybody, this is David Glenn, and you're listening to my favorite station in Eastern North Carolina, Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to Hour 2 of Pirate Radio Live. This hour of PRL is brought to you by Select Bank and Trust. Banking is banking until the service is not the same. Wouldn't you like to deal with a bank that is responsive to your needs, can make local decisions, and cares about you, the customer? Try Select Bank and Trust. Bank local. Bank select. Selectbank.com. Now, back to the show. Welcome back. Hey, eat healthy at Clean Eats. Sign up for a meal plan at cleaneats.com or stop in to eat at the cafe or grab a meal to go. Clean Eats is located on Red Banks Road and online at cleaneats.com. 
And as we head back in to Pirate Radio Live, I do have one additional NFL uh, piece of news for you clip. Uh, Cam Newton has returned to practice. He was uh, cleared and he practiced today after being out for 10 days with a COVID uh, positive test. So it looks like he will be ready to go for this weekend's action for the oh, Patriots. All right. Finally get that Patriots and Broncos game played, uh, which was not played last weekend. All right, let's head out to the Fixed NC Live line and talk to the color analyst on the Pirates IMG Sports Network. He is a former ECU DB, Kevin Monroe, joining us. Kevin, thanks for your time as always. How you doing today, man? I'm doing well, Cliff. Thanks for having me. Yes, sir. And I uh, wanted to get you on after a win because, uh, man, as you know, they have not been uh, plentiful over the years but it was awesome to get a W Saturday in Tampa and the Pirates really got everything clicking Kevin uh, and it starts up front and we'll start there but Holden Naylor's had a very efficient game passing the football, running the football Raji Harris had his coming out party but Kevin, how does an O-line play that much better from one week to the next because uh, that was the case on Saturday you know what, before I even answer that, you, you just, you, you made me think of something. And, you know, I left Pirate Nation and, and we averaged seven wins a season, uh, close to about seven and a half wins a season. The the class before me averaged eight wins a season. And we just, we just assumed that was the new normal. Yeah. You know, we, we all, we all came in shortly after the Liberty Bowl year where they won 11 games and we wanted to live up to that. You know, we had one down year. Uh, I think in 92 or 93, where they only won two games because of an injury to quarterback. But after that, every year was six, seven, eight, nine wins. And I just, it crushed me to see the end of the Logan era and the John Thompson era and then the losing just to start. And, and luckily we had that reprieve with Kip Holt and won a couple championships. Uh, but it's been tough. It's been tough being a Pirate fan. And but you and I are Cowboy and Redskins fans, the tough being fans of those teams as well. Yeah, so it's it's been hard, but uh, but back on topic. Uh, yeah, the offensive line. I tell you what, it's it's. Uh, I'm, I was happy to see it, mostly because I think as a Pirate fan, you were so just beat up over the fact that we couldn't do anything against Georgia State. Yeah. We couldn't run, we couldn't pass. It was just demoralizing, and you, you got to where you felt like you had your quarterback of the future, and then you started questioning that. You got to where you felt like you had some good running backs, and then you were questioning that. And everything became a big question mark because Georgia State, who is a good football team, a good football program, just did whatever they wanted. And so to see them bounce back, to see Donnie Kirkpatrick uh, put out a game plan where they were moving Holton out of the pocket, where they were moving the line of scrimmage to the offensive linemen, um, where they were finding running lanes, where they were able to pass the football, it was great to see. And I don't care what you think about how good a football team in South Florida is. They're good enough, and they just beat us 45-20 a year ago. And so to see them play well uh, was, was welcome. And you got C.J. Johnson going, Kevin. You got him a, a big touchdown score on a pass play from Holton Aylers. And uh, it was clicking on Saturday, and the same can be said for the defense. You go into that game with no sacks, and then, Kevin, they became contagious in that game against South Florida. Blake Harrell's defense getting after the quarterback there for uh, South Florida. Yeah, it's kind of funny. You know, uh, between David Horn and, and Jeff Charles, they read all the kind of sponsorships and one-liners. Uh, during the games for, for the sponsors. And I, the only read I have is Food Lion gives away a 1,000 meals for every sack. <laughs> and so I just been, I've been killing all these. I haven't had to say anything. <laughs> and all of a sudden I had to do it five times. I read that thing. So uh, it was great to see. I, I love the new defensive line. Uh, I love them all season just because they were, the, they were the group that we expect the least amount from, right? You, you had a good, good returning receivers. You had – running backs that you felt pretty good about. You had a quarterback you thought was going to be pretty good. The offensive line had three returning guys that were either uh, graduate or seniors. DBs were back from a year before, and, and linebackers most experienced position on the, on the team. Defensive line is in one position where we felt like, man, we only have two guys returning. We don't know what any of them can do. None of them were even in too deep last year, and they have been impressive. You know, they haven't gotten sacked, but they, they've caused some trouble. And, and if the DBs had played a little bit better in the first two games, you know, they probably would have had much better defensive numbers. So to see those guys finally get some sacks, to finally make some tackles in the backfield, 
uh, was great. I really think that group has improved every week, and they look good. Kevin Monroe joining us. Kevin, since you mentioned Jeff Charles and David Horn, I, I want to ask you, and I asked Jeff about week one where, or the first road game where you guys had to call the game at Dowdy Ficklin Stadium when ECU took on Georgia State. Jeff said he's a big critic of himself in the broadcast, and he thought it went really well. So how about two weeks now, Kevin, where you've had to call a road game from Dowdy Ficklin Stadium? I, I, you're probably not used to it yet, but uh, are you pretty comfortable doing that at this point? I, I kind of enjoy it, and I'm, I'm not a big critic of myself. I, I just I, I'm not, I don't consider myself a radio guy, right? I'm an ex football player that likes to talk about what I see on the field, yeah. and so I don't I don't think too deep into what I say, but uh, I enjoy it. Um, it's a lot going into traveling with the team and getting on the plane, and getting on buses, and staying in the hotel, being away from family. But just to drive to Greenville and do that game for four hours and drive right back home is kind of cool. I mean, don't get me wrong; I want to get back on the road with the team when it's safe. Uh, but I, I don't mind it. The, 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 the studio setup that Greg Pierce has for us is pretty awesome. We have all these TVs to watch the game on, and we got the crowd noise coming directly from the stadium, and so I think it works out pretty good. Kevin Monroe joining us. Kevin, now you got the Navy midshipmen rolling into town, and uh, Navy 2-0 and in conference play. They've been blown out by Air Force and BYU in two non-conference games. Malcolm Perry not there anymore, so they're not – the strongest Navy team we've seen roll in here, but d- does that matter at this point with the, the results, the history of this series? It has been dominated by Navy. Blake Harrell in year one, he knows the option, he knows defending the option. So, Kevin, just I don't even know. I- I'm trying not to think about the history when we go into this game on Saturday, but it's hard not to, right? So, what's your take on yeah. uh, this matchup with Navy? The, the Navy game i think gives every pirate fan like indigestion right <laughs> yeah. just thinking about them playing I mean, we've, we've seen them put up 70 on us we've seen them put up 60 50 uh you know there's just i think there's just one game in recent history where we went into annapolis and got the victory on the rough uh but it's been so many games where it's just it's been really tough and so uh you're right this is not the same navy team uh they're only averaging 166 yards per game rushing uh 93 passing uh this this is not a prolific offense uh, the teams they've played against, they've either blown them out or they've been very competitive games. They've not run away from anybody. Uh, but they, they are good. Uh, they are a good team, and, and I'm sure they're favored to, to beat the Pirates. But it, it's not one of these situations where you feel like you can't stop them. And I think the best defense against this Navy team is a good offense, right? Getting, getting Holt Nails on the field, getting those running backs, just maintain the ball, move the chains, keep the clock running, and not let the offense get on the field. Because – you know, all it takes is one person not paying attention to their assignment, not tackling the dive or not tackling the pitch or not tackling the quarterback when they're supposed to, and they're off for a 70-yard touchdown. And they'll do it to you time and time and time and time again. So uh, keeping our offense on the field and, and not having to worry about their, their offense as much is, is key number one. But, yeah, Blake Carroll and this new defense, I think they, they saw it some where he was before in that conference. They had a team, I think, that ran a triple option, so he's seen it before. They've tried to practice it in the preseason. They've been practicing it some with the scout team this season. And so it won't be the first time uh, that our defense sees it. However, it will be the best time. It will be the most uh, well run. Yeah. Uh, because you just can't have you just can't have a scout team quarterback go out and mimic the way they're going to do it. So it, it's going to be tough. Uh, the first couple of drives are going to be really, really tough, but hopefully they settle in and they can be okay. Kevin, uh, back to the run game, kind of where we started with the offensive line. I wanted to get your take on these young kids. I mean, Rashi Harris and, and Keaton Mitchell coming in. Mitchell got the start because Mike Houston really values practice and who plays the best to practice that, who practices the best that week. And he said Keaton Mitchell did. He got the start. Then Harris came in and you had to run with the hot hand. And Darius Pinnock still has a role on this team, catching the ball for a touchdown, coming in on a fourth and one, running the ball at the middle. We've seen Demetrius Mooney at Added to the backfield, uh, to the depth chart this week. So uh, you, you've got a nice mix of backs there, Kevin. And if, you're, uh, if your O line can can just play decent, give them guys a little bit of room, uh, it, it shows what can happen. On, and, and it showed on Saturday. And Kevin, the number of yards after contact for Mitchell and for Harris on Saturday, key numbers as well. These guys were not going down on first contact, and, and that was huge. Yeah, I think these are real deal running backs. I feel bad for Penix just because he's a different type of runner than both Harris and Mitchell, uh, to be honest. And, and they just bring a different uh, explosiveness, uh, the ability to keep their eyes downfield, but use their feet in the hole and make people miss. 
Uh, because when you have an offensive line that's just okay, not great, you need a back to be able to make some people miss. And I don't think that's Penning's strength. Uh, but I, but I, I agree with you. He can come out of the backfield, catch passes. He can come downhill in third and fourth and short. Uh, but he he's not going to create and 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 get six, seven, eight yards of carry uh, working his butt off in the backfield. It's kind of the old, you know, Barry Sanders comparison with his open offensive line back in the day. You got to kind of have somebody that can create back there. So I love what these young guys are doing. Um, this day and age, you got to have three, four, five running backs because they get injured so much, and uh, you know they 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 get fumbles and different things where you got to kind of swap them out. And so I love seeing Coach go with the hot hand and stick with Harris. I thought he had a great game, and I expect to see Mitchell have a game like that, and Hayden have a game like that, and even Penix have a game like that. So just the ability to come in and run the football and prove that you can do it it makes it makes preparing for the Pirate offense a lot tough. Talking to Kevin Monroe, Kevin, uh, how do you feel about heading into this one? You know uh, the the history of the series, but man, that that performance on Saturday had to give you some at least something uh, positive to look at when it comes to the Pirate offense and what they could do against Navy. Last year, they only scored ten points. Kevin, the offense has got to hold up to their end of the bargain uh, coming up this Saturday. You think they can do that? Yeah, I mean, I think this is a Navy team. They're giving up two seventy five on the ground. Uh, so if, the, if, if we go in doing what we've tried to do all year, which is establish a run, hopefully we can have some success at it and, uh, and maintain the ball, maintain the clock, put some points on the board, and that will give this offense some, uh, some confidence. But, listen, I, I saw this team against Georgia State, so I'm not overlooking any team. Yeah. And I, I, I know what, you know, that they're going to have to be, be ready and play their best game to win. So, you know, I think all of us were humbled by Georgia State. So I, I think if the Pirates can continue to run the football the way they did, and Holton can be better in the passing game like he was this past week. And defensively, just keep everything in front of you. You know, I, I don't think the DBs had a great game, but they kept everything in front of them for the most part. They tackled a lot better uh, and let the guys in the front seven do what they have been doing, which is play well. Uh, and I think you can be successful. Kevin, I know you got to run before we let you go. Uh, can Andy Dalton, the Red Rifle, lead your Cowboys to an awful division championship this year in the NFC East? <sighs> oh, my goodness. I tell you what, man, it's. I mean, that was so rough seeing Dak yeah. down. At least I have an excuse now if we don't make the playoff <laughs> that, oh, you know, yeah. one of the best quarterbacks in the league got hurt. But I, we'll see. I mean, like you said, the division is so bad that you just never know. But that being said, the Redskins can beat anybody on any, any given day. So can the Eagles. Not sure about the Giants. But there's going to be some teams that are going to win some games. And so we'll see. It, it, it's going to be ugly, but, but maybe Andy can get it done. It's going to be a limp to the finish line, that's for sure. Kevin, always appreciate it, man. Thanks for joining us, and uh, have a great call on Saturday. I appreciate it. All right, there he is, Kevin Monroe, joining us on the Fixed NC Live Line, talking Pirates and Midshipmen and getting his thoughts on the win over South Florida. All right, let's take a time out. When we return, we will look around the American Athletic Conference and also get uh, Austin Cox's perspective on Navy as they roll in here on Saturday to face the Pirates noon at Dowdy Ficklin Stadium. That and more on the way on Pirate Radio Live on a Wednesday. We're back with you after this. Hello, Pirate Nation. This is Representative John Bell, the Majority Leader of the North Carolina House, and it has been an honor serving the people of Eastern North Carolina in the last eight years. I've had the privilege of working with your local representatives, Dr. Perrin Jones and Chris Humphrey, as they delivered hundreds of millions of dollars in COVID relief funding to our small businesses, health care providers, and families right here in Pitt County. Unfortunately, their opponents are funded by radical, liberal, out-of-state donors that want to destroy our agriculture heritage, defund the police, and silence your voice by buying this election. This is not North Carolina. We cannot and will not let this happen. Dr. Perrin Jones and Chris Humphrey are focused on solutions, not revolutions. They will make sure your voice is heard and represent our Eastern North Carolina values. So Pirate Nation, the choice is clear. On November 3rd, please support and vote for Dr. Perrin Jones and Chris Humphrey for the North Carolina House. Strong voices for Eastern North Carolina. Paid for by the John Bell Committee. Ahoy, mateys! To keep those cars clean, you need the Pirate's Cove Fast Pass. The new Pirate's Cove Car Wash and Haviland Express Lube on Glen Burnie Road in New Bern is now open. Pirate's Cove in New Bern is offering Fast Passes for $9.99 for new Fast Pass customers. You can visit us in Greenville on Fire Tower Road, Memorial Drive, and on East 10th Street, and get a Fast Pass for only $9.99 at the new location on Glen Burnie Road in New Bern. So we have you surrounded. Pirate's Cove, the official car wash partner of ECU Athletics. 
Hey, Pirate fans, the Papa John's menu has grown again with the all-new grilled buffalo chicken papadilla. The papadillas are part sandwich, part pizza, and are only $6. Choose from the all-new grilled buffalo chicken, Philly cheesesteak, Italian, pepperoni meatball, and barbecue chicken and bacon, all for only $6 each. Also, for a limited time, get any large five-topping pizza for only $13.99. Place your order today online at papajohns.com and sign up for Papa Rewards. Papa John's the official pizza of the ECU Pirates. Register for Army ROTC to be a leader and an officer in the U.S. Army, Army Reserve, or Army National Guard. You could also be eligible for a full tuition scholarship. Lead the team that makes a difference. To learn more, contact Dale Anderson at 252-622-5346 or andersondal at ecu.edu. Paid for by the United States Army. Hi, this is Billy Parker, and football is here. Tailgate at home with family and friends this season and let Parker's Barbecue do all the cooking. While tailgating at your house, let us provide all the food with our delicious chicken, barbecue, seafood, and sides. We can customize packages for any size group, big or small. Give us a call today and place your order. Parker's and football, a winning combination. Also, shipping nationwide at parkersbbq.com. Parker's Barbecue is how friends and family come together. 2020 certainly hasn't been the year many of us were hoping for, but one thing has stayed the same. I'm Tim Sutton with Greenville Auto World, and our commitment to our customers has never wavered. Let Greenville Auto World show you how easy it is to buy a quality used car in Greenville. We believe in fair prices, superior service, and treating customers right leads to satisfied repeat buyers. Your vehicle is a big investment, and our customers trust us to keep them up and running with outstanding service and value. With Greenville Auto World, cross some parties at Bells Fork. The fun place to dine out with friends and family is Familia. Familia has something for everyone and offers favorites like New York style pizza, lasagna, homemade meatballs, plus new specials like chicken parm alfredo, mahi fish and chips, chicken piccata, veggie burger, butternut squash ravioli, and more. If you need food to go, Familia's drive through window is open and ready for all takeout orders. Familia, Fire Tower Road near Pitt Community College and FamiliaNC.com. Pirate Radio. The voice of the Pirate Nation. One, two, three, four, one. You're listening to Hour 2 of Pirate Radio Live. This hour of PRL is brought to you by Select Bank and Trust. Banking is banking until the service is not the same. Wouldn't you like to deal with a bank that is responsive to your needs, can make local decisions, and cares about you, the customer? Try Select Bank and Trust. Bank local. Bank select. Selectbank.com. Now, back to the show. Oh, welcome back. Got damage? Damage from wood rot? Fixed. Damage from smoke or fire? Fixed. Damage caused by water? Fixed. If you've got damage, use a contractor that works for you and not your insurance company. Visit FixedNC.com today or call 999-0001. That's three nines, three zeros, and a one. Fixed NC. Restore. Renew. Maintain. Now let's head back in to Pirate Radio Live. Here's your host, Clip Brock. All righty. Thank you, Shirley Rhodes. Coming up in just a second. I think he's on the phone right now. We'll talk to C. Austin Cox from the AAC Daily. Get his thoughts on what's going on in the American and talk ECU and Navy coming up this Saturday noon at Dowdy Ficklin Stadium. Coming up later on uh, this evening, we will hear from Donnie Kirkpatrick and Blake Harrell, perhaps the head coach Mike Houston as well. And uh, there's a lot of people asking about rumors floating around. Uh, just rumors at this point. When we know something, we will pass it along to you here at Pirate Radio. Uh, joining us on the Fixed NC Live Line is C. Austin Cox, who joins us once again on the program. Welcome back to the show. How are you doing today? I am doing great. Always a pleasure to be on here. And I uh, wanted to talk to you after a Pirate win, uh, Austin, because it's been uh, so rare uh, to do that. And uh, they pick up a, a nice road win against South Florida. And, uh, again, South Florida looks like they're uh, they're in for a season of struggles with year one of Jeff Scott, but the Pirates will take a win any way they can get it. Were you uh, surprised at all by that result uh, down in Tampa last week? Well, i tell you what. I didn't think that uh, 
that Jeff Scott was uh, this far behind on the rebuild. I think a lot of us thought uh, things were going to be going a little bit better for the boys down in Tampa. But, uh, you know, we did expect to see a jump forward in progress for ECU. Of course, Mike Houston did a great job last year of building momentum. We didn't see, you know, those wins that the fans wanted to see. But, you know, if you look closely, you can see a lot of things to be excited about going into 2020. And I think, you know, looking at that USF game, they really kind of, gave us even more things to be excited about. Of course, Holton Ehlers, uh, you know, I, he's one of those guys where I get excited about and then I feel like I don't want to jinx him because if I say something good is going to happen, you know, he has a bad game. But I, I thought he looked great against USF. Pirates are able to run the football and get after the quarterback. A recipe for success on Saturday, but it'll be a different challenge this Saturday when ECU faces Navy. And, man, you're a good guy to have on. You've seen the, the midshipmen in conference games, and they have been able to uh, to get two wins this year uh, over Temple and then to come from behind victory over Tulane. Now, non-conference has been a different story. They were blown out in that Monday night game against BYU where Ken Niamatololo came out and said they had not been having physical practices and tackling your practices and, and things like that. Uh, they look like a different team now, but uh, but again, they also got blown out by Air Force a couple weeks ago. So how do you figure out what's going on with this Navy team right now? I, I don't know. I'll tell you what, I wish I could figure it out because it would make my job a lot easier. Navy has, I don't want to say they've been sinking the conference this year, but you know, you mentioned those losses big blowout losses to both BYU and Air Force, and then for them to come in here and sit there and knock out wins against Tulane and Temple, we still don't know what happened in the second half of that Tulane game to see such a turnaround by Kenny Amadalolo's squad. But, you know, you mentioned they're 2-0. They're sitting there looking really good. They've got to be a challenge. You know, you've got to slow down Dalen Morris, who is starting to find his rhythm, too, and may be a threat that we haven't seen at Navy in a long time, which is, a quarterback that can throw. See Austin Cox joining us on the uh, Fixed NC Live line. We'll circle back to ECU uh, Navy at the end of the conversation, but a lot of good matchups this week. Want to get your take on them. Let's go Friday night, 6 o'clock in New Orleans. It'll be SMU at Tulane, and uh, the Ponies coming off their big win a couple weeks ago against Memphis. They'll try to keep it rolling. They're 4-0. Tulane the worst thing they can do is get a double-digit lead, right? It happened against Navy, and they let it slip away. It happened against Houston, up 24-7, to and the Cougars go on to, to wear out uh, Tulane. So uh, Tulane, uh, they're kind of a wounded dog right now. Uh, Austin, what do you think about their matchup against SMU? Well, I think you got a touchdown there. I think Willie Fritz's plan should be to go out there and just, just fall asleep through the first half. Yeah hope that SMU runs away, and then give his guys something to play for in the final 30 minutes because, you know, we talked about that Navy game. That was a head scratch, and then we see him do it again. You know, Tulane has just been uh, another team that at least did well out of conference. You know, they had that Southern Miss win, which kind of bumped things up. But, you know, with them going up against SMU, you know Sonny Dyke squad would come out there fast, hit them hard early. Uh, they've been the biggest surprise this season. First team to be 4-0 in the country. Uh, Sonny Dykes is building something really special, and he's doing it with, you know, a lot of people aren't paying attention to this. He's doing it with a lot of JUCOs and graduate transfers and been doing a great job with that. Uh, Willie Fritz, you know, I, I think like a lot of people, we expected, uh, you know, a two-lane team that's won back-to-back bowls to look a little bit better this year, at least be able to finish games. Uh, but in that one, you know, you just got to assume SMU is going to run away with it. All right. Uh, talking to C. Austin Cox here on the Fixed NC Live line from the AAC Daily. Uh, it's a great doubleheader of football coming up Friday. You also got BYU Houston. The BYU Cougars looked human last week against UTSA for the first time all year, really. They had been blowing everybody out. They are a road favorite against the Cougars of Houston on Friday. Uh, what do you think about Dana Holgerson's guys heading into this big time matchup? Well, what a surprise they were last week. But again, what did we really learn outside of the fact that Tulane has a hard time in second half? We, we saw Houston do a great job of coming back, overcoming uh, a lot of just mental mistakes. We saw penalties that could have been avoided. We saw several turnovers that could have been avoided. You know, you turn that ball over three times in the first quarter, you're going to have a lot of problems. But apparently not against Tulane. Unfortunately for Houston, as you mentioned, they're playing BYU, the number 14 team, in the country who, you know, they did see a, a couple chinks in the armor last week, as you mentioned, with UTSA. 
And you got to hope that Dana Holgerson and company are sitting there looking at tape, trying to find out, you know, whatever was working for the Roadrunners in that match to, to possibly be an advantage for that primetime matchup on ESPN. Uh, okay, going into Saturday, October 17th, uh, I did not have Cincinnati Tulsa as one of the AAC games of the year. But <laughs> after Tulsa goes to Orlando and beats UCF, I'm very intrigued by this matchup and Cincinnati a slight favorite on the road at Tulsa. But what do, what do Phil Montgomery's guys do for an encore uh, there in Tulsa? Yeah, I don't know. I, I still want to get a good look at uh, Phillip's, <laughs> Phillip Montgomery's contract and see if there's some kind of bonus in there for beating UCF because his team plays lights out every time against the Knights. Cincinnati has to hope it's not going to be the same case for them because when Tulsa went into Orlando, knocked off the Knights, they were sitting there on the outside of the top 10 looking in at number 11. Cincinnati now sitting there in the top 10 at number 8. You would hate to see, at least if you're a Bearcats fan, see the Bearcats stumble there in Tulsa, Oklahoma against that team that has proven – that they're not, they're not scared of anybody. They're not going to back down just because the team comes in ranked. But in that one, you still got to just feel like Cincinnati's not going to go in there. It's not going to be looking past Tulsa. I think the Bearcats go in there and do a great job of just taking care of business. See Austin Cox, AAC Daily, joining us on the Fixed NC Live line as we look at the uh, great slate uh, for the AAC this weekend. South Florida is at Temple, uh, expecting a Temple bounce back there after losing to Navy last week. And then on ABC, another headliner for the American, it'll be UCF at Memphis. Both of these teams uh, coming off uh, uh, some you know big game losses. Memphis to SMU, UCF uh, to... Um, Tulsa uh, and uh, who bounces back the strongest here uh, in this matchup? Obviously, the total is a high one at seventy three and a half. They're expecting a lot of points, a shootout here, and one of these teams is going to leave Saturday with two losses in league play. It's crazy when you mention that that you know they're going to walk out there with two losses, and it feels like you know at times because this twenty twenty season has been you know so herky jerky, stop and go that. We shouldn't be this far ahead. Not with these teams, not yeah. with a UCF team and a, or a Memphis team possibly having two losses. But, you know, the best part about it, of course, you mentioned it being on ABC. I always have to point out the great job the America's been doing of getting exposure this season. And it's a great job of, you know, helping every brand, of course, ECU included. Uh, but look at that one. Man, it's, you know, it's going to be fireworks. We're going to see a lot of scoring. You mentioned that over under at 73 and a half points. You know, it's going to be fun to watch. Who comes out on top could very well come down to that old cliche of whoever has the ball last. Man, uh, looking forward to that one. Looking forward to a fun weekend of football in the American Athletic Conference. And uh, we'll be focused on ECU Navy. Our pregame coverage begins Saturday morning, 8 a.m., right here on the Bud Light pregame tailgate. Uh, East Carolina began the week as a three-point dog. Right now, they are one-point favorites against the midshipmen, but us Pirates uh, know the history of this series. It has been dominated by Navy. So, Austin, uh, what do you think happens in the matchup at Dowdy Ficklin Stadium on Saturday? Well, you know, I'm just hoping that the Pirates take some momentum from that USF win, and they they finally you know start to look at it and say, hey, guys, you know we're not a hodgepodge team anymore. We're not, we're not just this patchwork, or we're not a rebuild project. This is Coach Houston's second year. We're starting to know each other. We've got brought in some really great talent through transfers. You know, we can win games, and I think we see a different ECU team than we've seen in the past against Navy this Saturday. Man, uh, that would be lovely for Pirate fans if uh, Blake Harrell in his first year as defensive coordinator could come in with a, a strong plan against that Navy option attack. Uh, also, I got you here. Have you looked at basketball at all uh, on the horizon as far as the AAC goes? You know, I've been trying to keep an eye on things. Of course, with uh, you know football, mentioning how the schedule keeps changing, I'm yeah. trying to keep a close eye on that. But uh, basketball, the good news is a lot of teams just started practicing today. Uh, I know Tulsa and a couple other programs uh, have th- started doing their official practices. So the good news is that everybody right now is uh, business as usual, should be good. Of course, uh, we might want to keep an eye on Wichita State. I'm sure your oh, listeners yeah. know the, yeah. the Greg Marshall situation. We've got to keep an eye on that. But 
outside of that, everything looks good for this fall. Yeah, and uh, they're, they're going to play the, the 20 league games. East Carolina's in one of those tournaments around Thanksgiving, so getting the schedule underway, and the Pirates are going to have a lot of guys back. Uh, we'll uh, we'll circle back to basketball uh, later on with you, Austin, and get you back on the show uh, next month and talk about that. But thanks for joining us today, and I always enjoy talking football with you. Hey, same with me. Uh, always a pleasure, anytime. That's the Austin Cox from the AAC Daily joining us on the Fixed NC Live Line, talking a little ECU Navy, and really is a, a great week of games in the American this week with a couple of headliners. When you look at Cincinnati, Tulsa, and of course UCF and Memphis, so Shirley Rhodes will be on the scoreboard during the uh, Bud Light pregame tailgate, but then after the game on the U.S. Sailor fifth quarter call-in show, keeping you up to date on all of that action. All right, let's take our uh, our final time out of hour number two. We'll come back. Wrap up this hour, get you set for hour three. Also, Shirley, we got to open up the booty bag here on a Wednesday. What are we giving away today? Ah, uh, I am going to give away. Give it away, give it away, give it away now. Pops. Pops. I actually had a listener tweet me yesterday. That based on my recommendation of the hamburger steak, <laughs> the Shirley, they went and got it, and they agreed. We do not like just say things to say things. No, we. I don't. We I don't stand have time by for that. our statements. <laughs> Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. If Shirley says that the the hamburger steak meal at Pops is dynamite. She means it. Yeah. If I say when you go to Familia to get the linguine with shrimp and sausage with alfredo sauce i mean it's like one of the best things you've ever had in your life absolutely we are giving you solid recommendations it is your job to take those recommendations accept them go out into the world and use them for yourself make that play it's a lock the lock of the year the lock of the week Pops. Yeah, when we hamburger talk, steak. When we talk food, it is like a lock of the century. Oh uh, yeah, no, no kit, no question. So you can go out and get your own pops uh, coming up in the three o'clock hour. We'll make you a winner outside of the Pirate Radio booty bag. Uh, I got that on the way. All right, let's take a time out. Come back more Pirate Radio live to go on a Wednesday. We're back after this. It's a story that started in a community like ours. Cal Cunningham grew up in Lexington, where church youth groups working at the local brickyard in McDonald's shaped his life. And now Cal's running a different kind of campaign for the U.S. Senate. I'm Cal Cunningham. I want my service in the U.S. Senate to be about listening and going places where Democrats don't always go. That's what I learned growing up in Lexington, where we don't check voter registration before taking care of our neighbors. We believe in hard work and service, just like the soldiers I served with overseas. Cal Cunningham volunteered after 9-11, a lieutenant colonel in the Army Reserve who served three tours and took on corrupt government contractors. And Cal will take on the corruption in Washington that's been rigging the system for the drug and insurance companies. That's why Cal's not taking corporate PAC money because he believes the top one percent don't need more favors it's regular folks who need a voice he'll be a senator on our side i'm cal cunningham and i approve this message paid for by cal for nc banking is banking until service is not the same this is eric clark from select bank and trust and this year has been unusual but we have continued to focus on what has always been important to us our customers when businesses needed access to the paycheck protection program our team of local bankers worked around the clock to successfully keep our customers open and their employees working wouldn't you like to deal with a bank that is responsive to your needs can make local decisions and cares about you the customer we are select bank and trust bank local bank select member fdic equal housing lender Humana is proud to serve veterans. If you've recently turned 65 or become Medicare eligible, Humana would be proud to help you with your Medicare decisions or any questions that may arise. Let an agent assist you now to determine which Humana Medicare plan may best serve you. Humana can teach you about health plans, which will provide you with the access to products and programs to help support a healthy life. Humana is proud to be the National Medicare Advantage Plan provider to the veterans of foreign wars. This is Denise Walker. Call me today at 434-531-5674 to get a no-cost, no-obligation Medicare benefits review. 
The Frals family lives on a lush piece of land called Greener Pasture, and they work on it behind the wheel of a John Deere 1 Series tractor. With its durable construction and features that hook up to dozens of attachments with ease, no job is too tough. The Frals family runs with us, because this is more than just land, it's home. Nothing runs like a deer. Search John Deere 1 Series for more. Get quality at every turn with quality equipment. Your local John Deere dealer, with 27 locations in North Carolina and Southeastern Virginia. Find out more at qualityequip.com. Are you trying to reduce clutter? Want to save a tree? Greenville Utilities can help. E-Bill is a simple solution. Imagine getting an email letting you know your bill is ready. And with a few clicks on your computer or smartphone, you can review and pay your bill. It's just that easy. Signing up is simple. All you need to do is to log on to your account at GUC.com and update your contact information in E-Bill setting. You can even continue to receive a paper bill if you'd like. E-Bill from Greenville Utilities. Just one of the ways GUC is here for you. At Tiebreakers, we admit we have a bit of a problem. People love our wings so much that they're starting to sell their home TVs just so they can watch all the sporting events here at Tiebreakers. Seriously, we're glad you love our hand-breaded, hand-cut boneless wings that much, but we really need you to go home at the end of the night. It's okay. We'll be here tomorrow. And when you come back, bring a friend with you. For great food, great friends, and cold beer, we'll see you at Tiebreakers. Tiebreakers, break the chain, eat local. BMS Builders is your premier custom builder in eastern North Carolina. With Blackwood and Mills Creek in Greenville, Dalton's Cove in Farmville, and Belmar in Aden, these are just a few of the developments featuring BMS Builders Homes. They can build the home of your dreams. Just ask Dr. Dennis Ross in Greenville or East Carolina football coach Mike Houston. They built their homes, and they can build yours as well. BMS Builders. Give them a call at 916-1578 for BMS Builders. This is Pirate Radio, WGHB Farmville, 1250 at 92.7 FM Greenville, WDLX Washington, 930 at 104.1 FM Washington. You're listening to Hour 2 of Pirate Radio Live. This hour of PRL is brought to you by Select Bank and Trust. Banking is banking until the service is not the same. Wouldn't you like to deal with a bank that is responsive to your needs, can make local decisions, and cares about you, the customer? Try Select Bank and Trust. Bank local. Bank select. Selectbank.com. Now, back to the show. Welcome back. PRL this afternoon is brought to you by Bud Light, who reminds Pirate fans to always stay in the game and drink responsibly. Bud Light, the official beer of the ECU Pirates and proudly distributed by Carolina Eagle Distributing since 1989. Now let's head back in to Pirate Radio Live. Here is your host, Clip Brock. All right. Uh, got a man on the scene, my buddy Keena Lynch, former ECU basketball video coordinator, who's now in Division 2 or 3. He's at Lincoln with former ECU basketball assistant coach John Mosley, who is the head coach there. Oh, okay. Coach Mo, the uh before the Scotty Montgomery, mm-hmm. there was the other coach Mo, mm-hmm. John Mosley. But anyway, Keena Lynch is in Arlington at the ballpark and he's going to be watching Braves and Dodgers live today. Oh, okay. So that's pretty cool. That series is the only series there have been fans in attendance in 2020. I, I don't think there's any fans in California to see the um, the other series, the Astros Rays, right now. But the NLCS and the World Series is going to be played in Arlington, Texas, and uh, there are fans there now, and there will be fans for the World Series. So, what what time are, is the game tonight? Well, the Braves surely play at six oh eight. Why do you sound like Kermit? Well, I, I'm exaggerating a Skip Carey voice. Oh. when he would call Braves games, uh, my all time favorite with Pete Van Weeren on the superstation. It, it still sounds like Kermit. I know. Yeah, it probably gets worse as the years <laughs> go on. <laughs> Well, the Braves, you just start it like that and yeah. go from there. Um, Rich Eisen used to do that on Sports Center back in the day, uh, who is now, of course, with NFL Network. Uh, Braves at six, a little after six. and uh, Who's uh, pitching tonight? Uh, on the mound for Atlanta is Kyle Wright, and he's facing, I believe, Urias from the uh, Dodgers. Yeah, that is correct. Okay. And I uh, saw Bryce Williams will throw. I mean, the Braves have all these young rookie pitchers 
who they're just throwing out there. Ian Anderson has been awesome. Kyle Wright was awesome in his appearance against the Marlins, and you just hope that works. I mean, the Dodgers are a favorite tonight because probably because of their ninth inning last night, and also they have the uh, the big pitching advantage in this game uh, against the land of the starting pitching that is. So, uh, and then at eight forty. It'll be Rays Astros, and the Rays can close it out. And last night, the Astros led the majority of that game one nothing. Altuve, another error. He's had what three errors, I think, in the last two games. Yeah, he's got the bad case of the yips right now. He's got the yips. He did hit a home run last night, but his uh, defensive miscue cost the Astros big time last night. And the Rays can close it out and uh and move on and advance i was telling chandler the schedule because it's all about me and it, for the listener it's all about you we're all selfish human beings it's all about us all the time they have really screwed me over with these start times six o'clock yesterday six o'clock today and then you know what they did surely they're like hey let's go braves dodgers nine o'clock friday night when we're not when i have to get up for the bud light pregame tailgate the next day i will say though if the Rays Astros series is over by then, maybe that time gets moved up. It probably does to seven or eight. So, anyway, just just so gr- in, so in other words, you're going to be cranky for at least the first hour of the Bud Light pregame tailgate. <laughs> well, you know, look. By the way, we have an awesome setup this year where Jeff Charles joins us hour one. Yeah. So usually it's like fifty percent me give energy, fifty percent guest. I guess as the host, I should give about eighty, right? 80 20 but jeff goes 100 percent energy and i just sit here and scratch my eyes and try to wake up you know mm-hmm. so uh we got an awesome setup with the voice this year in hour one and he takes care of that so so he pretty much so pretty much you're gonna ride his energy train uh yes i am uh at the, 8 a.m I'll, i'm the caboose on that jeff <laughs> charles train <laughs> i'm in the back just trying to keep up. That's all I'm doing. There you go. There you go. And uh, Shirley, luckily, is a morning person, so I always can count on you. Mostly. Chandler will be here when the food gets here. Of course. And, uh, and Chan- Chandler has, like, one of those bloodhound noses. Like, he knows when the food has <laughs> arrived, and he can smell it from miles, How and far he away shows are up you? the back door. How far away do you live from here, Chandler? A couple miles? Yeah, no, I mean, I, so I'm like, like right there at the stadium. So you're right, Shirley. That scent somehow reaches his, uh, it goes through the window, and uh, he wakes up and, and just comes right on over in yeah, his Crocs. These nooners, I've been able to wake up early because I can just kind of smell the Parkers. Also, as soon uh, as it's being picked up, I'm like, and maybe as they're going by like 14th Street or something like uh, that, yeah. I just kind of like whip. pop up, and I'm like, what is that? And I'm like, ooh, Parkers. And then I just take off to the station big shout out to biscuit boy glenn griffin as well providing the early morning biscuits that's another thing that gets me going in hour one biscuit boy all right let's take a time out come back hour three on the way we will visit with the voice jeff charles called a w painted it purple on saturday can he do that again this saturday against navy also hey happy to talk about a win with bryce williams former ecu tight end Chandler tweeted that out, right? Uh, Happy to talk about a ween with Bryce Williams. Uh, We'll do that in hour number three as well. More to go on Pirate Radio Live. We're back with you after this. Hey, Pirate Nation, this is former ECU tight end Bryce Williams from my friends at the Auto Store Group. If you're in the market for a quality used vehicle, then the Auto Store Group is for you. The Auto Store Group has three locations and over 150 quality used vehicles to choose from for all budgets. Shop their entire inventory today at theautostoregroup.com. The Auto Store Group, your hometown store and Pirate owned and operated for over 38 years. Go Pirates! Hidden phone trade-ins, hidden plan requirements, hidden catches. You won't find them at U.S. Cellular because we speak FAIR. Plus, when you switch right now, you can get $500 off the latest phones. Upgrade to FAIR. Upgrade to U.S. Cellular. Requires new postpaid service plan, new line port, and credit approval. Qualified smartphone purchase and comes via monthly bill credit on a 30-month RIC. Taxes, fees, and additional terms apply. This is Brandon Tate, owner and operator of Atlantic Wireless, an authorized agent for U.S. Cellular since 1997. Visit AtlanticWireless.com to find the store near you. We go beyond the call. 
Hi, this is Scott Muller with Clean Eats. Carol and I would like to personally thank all of you for supporting Clean Eats so well through these tough times. We are blessed to have such a great community helping us weather the storm. If you're having trouble consistently eating healthy, go to cleaneats.com and click on meal plans and give our tasty and affordable meals a try. Or stop by the cafe for lunch and let us show you just how simple and easy it is to get started and stay on track. Clean Eats, it's a lifestyle. 805 Red Banks Road, Arlington Village. This is Martin Truex Jr., and as a NASCAR Cup Series champion, I love one-stop shopping. When I need fresh tires or fuel during a race, my pit crew takes care of everything. Off the track, I have an auto owner's independent agent. They handle all my insurance in one place. Car, home, life, and business. Get your own pit crew and find a local agency with auto owner's insurance. This is Jeff Gibson with Town Insurance in Greenville. Call me today at 756-8300. Go Pirates! If you are push mowing your yard using an inefficient lawn tractor or your current zero turn spends more time in the shop than mowing your grass, it's time you look at a Hustler zero turn lawnmower. Residential mowers from Hustler are built like tanks and drive like sports cars. All Hustler mowers have fabricated welded steel decks. Don't settle on cheap units with flimsy stamped decks from big box stores. Come see Ron Ayers Motorsports. It will guide you to the right mower for your property and your budget. Find us at Ron Ayers Motorsports Highway 11 North of the airport in Greenville. Hi, this is Luke Keekley. Last season, I was captain on defense. This season, since so many of us will be watching football from home, I'm football watching with Pepsi. And you know me, I pour everything I've got into it. Ah. All right, football watchers, let's do this. Opening click offs. Here we go. Click on, click off. Click on, click off. Stretch that thumb. You can't have finger fatigue bringing you down in the postseason. Nice job. And my favorite, second half sip-offs. Pepsi's up, lift, pull, open. Mmm, ice cold Pepsi and watching football. Nothing better. It's not game day without a delicious, refreshing Pepsi, the official soft drink of the National Football League. Head to your nearest retailer, grab your Pepsi before kickoff, then sit back, relax, and cheer on your favorite team. Pepsi, made for football watching. Wouldn't it be great if you could get auto, home, life, and business insurance all from one agency? Well, that's where the Gavigan Agency comes in. They can help protect what is important to you. So why not simplify your life? See the Gavigan Agency in Greenville or give them a call today at 252-756-1400. Nationwide is on your side. Nationwide Mutual Insurance Company and Affiliates, Columbus, Ohio. Subject to underwriting guidelines, review, and approval. Pirate Radio. And you write that down, because when you're at East Carolina, you go for it every time. Or you don't coach at East Carolina, you don't come to East Carolina, you don't play at East Carolina with a weak heart. Write it! The Voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to Hour 3 of Pirate Radio Live. This hour of PRL is brought to you by the Auto Store Group. Pirate owned and operated for over 38 years. Shop their entire inventory today at theautostoregroup.com. Now, back to the show. Well, welcome back. Live well, move more, and hurt less with kinetic physical therapy. If you're recovering from an injury, getting back into sports, dealing with everyday pain or fatigue, then kinetic physical therapy can help you get back on track and live well. Kinetic has national certified therapists for physical, occupational, speech, and massage therapy all in a state-of-the-art facility on Arlington Boulevard in Greenville. Visit KineticPTGreenville.com. Now let's head back in to Pirate Radio Live. Here's your host, Clip Brock. All right, hour three on the way and a big hour three it shall be. We'll visit with the voice Jeff Charles. We'll talk to former ECU tight end Bryce Williams as well and open up the booty bag. As we went into break, we were talking to every Every Saturday on the Bud Light pregame tailgate, we all take a player as our our quote-unquote fantasy pick. We compile the stats, and we have a winner each week. So uh, so for the past game, Chandler took Raji Harris. Shirley took C.J. Johnson. And I was tallying up the points. And for the first time ever, I had to go to decimals because it was that close. So All right. Give it to me. Give it to me. Raji Harris, 115 yards and two touchdowns rushing 
He had one catch for seven yards. That puts his total at 25.2 fantasy points. C.J. Johnson, 99 yards receiving, two touchdowns. Had a couple of drops. And that cost him. Rajee Harris's one catch puts him over the top. 25.2 to 24.9. Rajee Harris wins. Come on! <laughs> That's twice in a row. That's two weeks in a row where... Shirley has just came up short. A very close once again. Oh, man. However you want to look at it, Raji Harris's seven-yard catch or C.J. Johnson's drops were, the, uh, were what cost you this week, Shirley. But, hey, two great picks in a row by Shirley Rhodes. I mean, Blake Prohl the week before, C.J. Johnson, who hey, we weren't sure, sure how he was going to perform. Don't patronize her, Chandler. I'm, dude. I know. But I'm just being a good sportsman. Now's not the time. A good sportsman. I'm you're here, a great sportsman. <laughs> Speaking of sportsmen, Bryce Williams will be here in just a little bit. Sweet. Um, so, Chandler, uh, you said you want to Raji Harris again, right? Saturday, yes. And you'll be here for the show? No, I will not. Oh, okay. Well, you don't play then. Oh. Okay. Yes. Oh, no, 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 no. No. You have no. to be here to pl- participate. Oh, that's not fair, we man. We don't do mail-in ballots. You know how easy it is to cheat on those? <laughs> you might vote twice. What do I know? You might get eight players. <laughs> but it only counts on the show, I'm and I'm going to, Raji Harris. I'm trying to be topical. All right, uh, Chandler has Raji Harris this week. It doesn't matter because he won't be here, so one of us will pick Raji Harris, and we'll make our fantasy picks on Saturday. I just ruined both of y'all's day at the same time. That's ah! a, I'm the dream crusher. All right, more to go on Pirate Radio Live, Hour 3. We'll talk to Jeff Charles after this. Hey, Pirate Nation, this is Tom Brown from Brown and Wood Buick GMC Truck. We've been serving the Pirate Nation in Eastern North Carolina for 83 years. We have four brands, three generations, two showrooms, and one goal to make sure you leave a happy customer. This month at Brown and Wood, get an all-new 2020 GMC Sierra and save over $10,000 off. As always, Brown and Wood is the home of the lifetime warranty. We're located on Greenville Boulevard next to the Convention Center or shop us online at brownandwoodauto.com. Hello, Pirate Nation. This is Representative John Bell, the Majority Leader of the North Carolina House, and it has been an honor serving the people of Eastern North Carolina the last eight years. I've had the privilege of working with your local representatives, Dr. Perrin Jones and Chris Humphrey, as they delivered hundreds of millions of dollars in COVID relief funding to our small businesses, health care providers, and families right here in Pitt County. Unfortunately, their opponents are funded by radical, liberal, out-of-state donors that want to destroy our agriculture heritage, defund the police, and silence your voice by buying this election. This is not North Carolina. We cannot and will not let this happen. Dr. Perrin Jones and Chris Humphrey are focused on solutions, not revolutions. They will make sure your voice is heard and represent our Eastern North Carolina values. So Pirate Nation, the choice is clear. On November 3rd, please support and vote for Dr. Perrin Jones and Chris Humphrey for the North Carolina House. Strong voices for Eastern North Carolina. Paid for by the John Bell Committee. We're midway through bath time, and two medium, two-topping Domino's pizzas for $5.99 each have begun their drive to the Smith's front door. That's a GPS-enabled custom delivery alert, folks. The newest improvement to the Domino's tracker saying Domino's will be there in two minutes. They're calling it audible. Bath time's now rinse time. They've got one kid dry, two kids dry. The pizzas are here. They made it to the door. The kids are clean enough. The new Domino's tracker with GPS worked again. To add a minimum, pan pizza will be extra. Ask for this limited time offer. Prices, participation, delivery area, and charges may vary. Hidden phone trade-ins, hidden plan requirements, hidden catches. You won't find them at U.S. Cellular because we speak FAIR. Plus, when you switch right now, you can get $500 off the latest phones. Upgrade to FAIR. Upgrade to U.S. Cellular. Requires new postpaid service plan, new line port, and credit approval. Qualified smartphone purchase and comes via monthly bill credit on a 30-month RIC. Taxes, fees, and additional terms apply. Does the idea of going to your local U.S. Cellular store make you feel a bit uncomfortable? Tired of the hassle of waiting and wearing a mask? Let Toby Williams and its outside sales team take away that worry. They will come right to your home or office and drop your phone off on the porch or at the front desk for you. Saving you time and worry is what the team at Cellular Warehouse is all about. Call Toby today at 252-799-7051 and let them help you with all of your wireless needs. Cellular Warehouse, your local U.S. Cellular authorized agent.
Let us help you get back to business. This is Donald Stocks and Justin Judge of PIP of Eastern North Carolina. We're ready to assist your business with branded PPE. Would you like face masks with your logo? We can do that. Plus custom social distancing signage. Now is the time to ramp up your marketing efforts. Whether it's cutting edge, contactless, touchless marketing, or traditional direct mail, we can do it all. We are PIP PIP of of Eastern Eastern North North Carolina. Carolina. Can't make it to the game? Relax. Caustic Sug Furniture can provide you with the best seats in the house. We have the area's largest selection of Lazy Boy motion furniture in stock and ready to go. Lazy Boy recliners, reclining sofas, love seats, and reclining sectionals in hundreds of colors, styles, fabrics, and leather. All at a very comfortable price. Remember, when it comes to Lazy Boy motion furniture, we're your ticket to the best seats in the house. Caustic Sug Furniture in Greenville. Hi, this is Phil Steele of Phil Steele's College Football Preview Magazine, and you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of Pirate Nation. You're listening to Hour 3 of Pirate Radio Live. This hour of PRL is brought to you by the Auto Store Group. Pirate owned and operated for over 38 years. Shop their entire inventory today at theautostoregroup.com. Now back to the show. Welcome back. If you're in the market for a quality used vehicle, then the Auto Store Group is for you. The Auto Store Group has three locations and over 150 quality used vehicles to choose from for all budgets. Shop their entire inventory today at theautostoregroup.com. And remember, every purchase comes with a free bucket of fun. The Auto Store Group, your hometown store and pirate owned and operated for over 38 years and cliff as we head back into the show if you are interested in betting lines there's an article it's up on our pirate radio social media right now from sportsbettingdime.com and it has lincoln riley uh, excuse me lincoln riley listed as a favorite in the odds to be the atlanta falcons next head coach Hmm. at plus 300 wow so interesting do with that information <laughs> whatever you want yeah they said odds for anything and uh that's an it i hadn't seen that so uh yeah that just came out about two minutes ago oh, it's okay. up on our part radio social media i was looking at this on social media abc news tweeted it out the um says growing outrage after a zoo visitor tossed a lit cigarette into an orangutan enclosure so they threw the cigarette in there you know what happened the I'm, or- a, uh, I'm guessing the orangutan smoked it. He picked it up. He went and sat against like this railing and just started smoking the cig. <laughs> and it is the wow. I guess I mean I guess the situation's not funny, but like seeing the orangutan just chilling there smoking the cigarette is quite comical to me i don't know there you go folks google that one up and check that one out in your own time all right uh let's head out to the fixed nc live line jeff charles finally got to paint it purple on saturday a pirate win versus south florida and jeff uh i know you like all the pirate fans and especially the coaches and and players were relieved and and also overjoyed uh with that victory on saturday no doubt about that, Cliff, and I'll tell you what was good about it is the team played so well, and it was like, who are these guys in these pirate uniforms in this game in Tampa? Because we had not seen that all year. It's been a long time since we've seen a pirate football team play that well, Cliff, as you well know, but offensively, defensively, special teams, I mean, it just looked like a whole different unit, and I don't think any of us really saw it coming, especially after how they struggled so badly against Georgia State. So you never know. Every game's a new adventure, and we go into this game this Saturday not knowing exactly what we're going to see. And I always say I think that's why a lot of us hang around so long, because you just can never figure this out, never know what's going to happen next. And that's what makes everything interesting. Yeah, and uh, I had that thought, Jeff, in the first quarter, that we look like a a real football team in in all areas. And uh, running the football – one of those areas. Keaton Mitchell got the start. He looked good, Jeff. And then uh, Raji Harris came in and took it from there. And he was a load to bring down for those South Florida defenders. And kudos to the O-line for opening up holes. But Harris also had 50-plus yards after contact in that game, Jeff. And it was nice to see the uh, the big kid running. Yeah, it really is. He's 228 pounds. And remember now, he's a true freshman. So he's going to continue to get bigger and stronger. 
and he's got those 228 pounds clip on a 5'10 frame. So he's pretty tough to, to bring down, especially once he has a, a head of steam up. Boy, it's going to be fun to watch him, isn't it, the next few years in a pirate uniform. And Keaton Mitchell, what I like about Keaton Mitchell, now he's not nearly as big. He's only 180 pounds. But if you watch him clip, he falls forward all the time. I mean, he gets hit. And, you know, sometimes little backs, smaller backs uh, don't do that. But uh, he, he gets some yards after contact as well. So you really like these young kids. And then Darius Pinnock seems like he's fitting into a role as well. He's the veteran there. And they gave him the ball in the fourth quarter to grind up the clock, and he does such a good job of that. And, you know, Darius has two catches this year, and they've both been for touchdowns. <laughs> yeah. So he certainly has his role. And, you know, the Pirates have some other running backs like Chase Hayden. And we mentioned uh, Demetrius Mooney as well. And Demetrius uh, had some, some issues. that He wasn't able to get on the field a whole lot in practice, but he's healthy now. And remember, he was the leading rusher on this football team of last year. Yeah. And he's not even um, gotten a carry so far this year, but maybe he'll get some on Saturday. So all of a sudden you've got these stable of running backs, a whole bunch of guys, young guys, with the exception of uh, Phoenix, that are going to be around here for a while. Jeff talked to Kevin Monroe, your broadcast partner, earlier in the program, and it was funny. He was talking about all the ad reads you guys do, and he said that you and David Horn were reading a ton of ads, and Kevin had his uh, his sack ad that he had to read, and he said uh, he didn't get to read it for the first two weeks, and he had to read it a bunch of times on Saturday as the, the sacks became contagious for the Pirates defense. They were getting after McLeod, the South Florida quarterback, and that was good to see, too. Uh, Blake Carroll dialing up some pressure, and pressure that actually got to the quarterback, pressure that worked, and uh, they were swarming around on Saturday night. They really were, Clip. As you know, the first two games, they did not have a sack, and then they had five sacks in this last game, and that's what Coach Harrell wants to do. He wants to play a very aggressive style of defense. He wants to blitz. He wants to bring pressure, and he was able to do that last week. And remember now, Jordan McLeod's no slowpoke. I mean, he's an elusive quarterback. He's got pretty good feet and pretty good speed, so... That says a lot, too, for them able to sack him. And so, you know, again, it was just uh, so many good things coming out of that game. And we talk about all of these defensive linemen that they have, and I've got 12 of them on my board again this week, and we'll probably see 10 or 12 of them again this week, Cliff. And it seems like every game there's a a couple of new guys that that kind of step up, and, and all of a sudden you say, well, uh, who's that guy? And, yeah, he's he's another one of the defensive linemen that is starting to play, and they're all young. Most of them are all freshmen or redshirt freshmen. Uh, sophomore, too, dotted in there. So, you know, it's very encouraging. Now, obviously, these guys have got to continue to work hard and improve and get better, but if they have that kind of work ethic and they continue to, to be committed to the program, uh, we we could see some really good football here in the next few years. Visiting with the voice, Jeff Charles on the Fixed NC Live line. So, Jeff, the defense coming off their best performance of the year, and now they face an entirely different offense. The Navy midshipmen coming to town. We all know what that means, Jeff, and it doesn't matter who the defensive coordinator, the defensive coaches, the head coaches have been. It has always been tough to slow down this option attack if you're ECU. And no Malcolm Perry this year or no Keenan Reynolds, no Dobbs. They're not the best Navy we've seen. But as Kevin Monroe, I thought he put it pretty well, Jeff. He said, uh, anytime Pirate fans see Navy on the schedule, it gives you indigestion. And uh, that's his feeling (laughs) heading into this one, Jeff. And and we all know why. The scores speak for themselves in, in this matchup, in this history. Well, I've had a lot of indigestion calling the games (laughs) over the years, Cliff, and we go back to that first game in 2006. Uh, This series is seven games old. I've had the opportunity to call all seven games in the series. Navy's won six of those seven. And my goodness, how can we forget that 2010 game? Navy scored 76 points against the Pirates in that game, won 76 to 35. It's just hard to believe, isn't it, that One college team can score 76 points against another, but unfortunately we witnessed that in 2010. And then it was just four years ago, in 2016, Navy scored 66 points. In 2012, they scored 56 points against the Pirates. So there have been some long days at the ranch when it comes to ECU playing Navy, and I think one of the real great storylines going into this game, Clip, is how will Blake Harrell, the new defensive coordinator, and a lot of new players, how will they 
how will they play against this triple option offense that Navy runs, and they always seem to run it to perfection against the Pirates. You watch Navy play other games, and, of course, uh, we watch them play other teams other than ECU after the ECU games or before the ECU games, and, and they just never look as proficient <laughs> against right. everybody else than they do against ECU. Sometimes you say, well, that team doesn't look very good at all. They're getting stuffed with the running game at the line of scrimmage, and they can't throw it, and they look pretty bad on offense, and then they play against the Pirates, and we all know what's happened in this series. So, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing this defense, this ECU defense against Navy's offense this Saturday, and just to see if they can play better against the midshipmen in this game and what they've been able to do in the past. Bryce Williams joining us here inside the Pirate Radio Studios. Good to see you, Bryce. Yeah, thanks for having me. So I'm late. Of all the frustrating things in football, Bryce, how frustrating is it standing on the sideline watching Navy's offense slowly go down the field and just kill that clock? Very frustrating. <laughs> I was talking to at the gym this morning about it, and it's like, man, you'll see, oh, it's third and four, you know, third and five. You're like, all right, guys, stop them. You know, it'll be good, and we'll punt and get the ball. But when you know it, they'll get that what I say, third and five, they'll get that third and five yard and half an inch or whatever it may be and move the chains and you're like, my goodness, and then there's another you know, five minutes it seems of waiting and it it's a little frustrating that's for sure. And uh, you know, it's tough on the defense, Jeff. We'll talk to Bryce about this but, but Jeff, what about the Pirates offense? They know they're going to have a limited amount of possessions. You got to be super efficient offensively when you take on these midshipmen. That'll be a test for Donnie Kirkpatrick's guys on Saturday. Yeah, no doubt about that. Bryce could speak better to that than I can, but you're right. Uh, sometimes Navy keeps the ball for nine or ten minutes in these drives, and then they get ahead of you. And so you have to feel some pressure that you have limited possessions, and, and you've got to come back, and you've got to find a way to score some points against these guys. And, you know, a lot of times, I think it was Temple last week, I think they only had seven possessions. So wow. if you only have seven possessions, you better score the majority of the time that that you have the football because you're just not going to get it back. And that's the way Navy plays. That's the way the service academies play. And they've done that for years, and it's been a winning formula for them. Cliff, I think we forget last year, uh, Navy was 11-2 and last year, and they beat Kansas State in the Liberty Bowl. They had a terrific season, and they're bringing back a lot of those guys with the exception, as you mentioned, of the quarterback, uh, Malcolm Perry. But, uh, they've got a lot of guys back, and they're coming off their best game of the year, beating Temple uh, last week. That was their best performance so far uh, of the season. So I talked to Coach uh, Niamatololo today, and, and he was encouraged with his football team the way they played last week. Jeff Charles will join us bright and early Saturday on the Bud Light pregame tailgate. We'll have a one-on-one with Navy head coach Ken Niamatololo and join us for the first hour of the show. Jeff, always enjoy the chat, and uh, hoping you can paint another one purple coming up on Saturday. Me too, Clip. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Voice. There's Jeff Charles joining us on the Fixed NC Live line. Bryce Williams joining us now, and Bryce will talk more about it. Uh, Last week, Navy's first possession of the game against Temple. 17 plays, 75 yards, 9 minutes, 38 seconds. Oh, the first boy. quarter is pretty much over, and you hadn't touched the ball yet. That <laughs> That is crazy. One thing that you, that you said that stood out to me is, you know, we have limited possession, so, um, you know, we got to be sharp and, you know, make the most of our opportunities. And, you know, I think if we play like we did against USF last week and, you know, like I said, look sharp, um, you know, executed the plays well and made the most of our opportunities. I think, you know, I think it'll be good. Help out your defense too, right? Oh, uh, no doubt. You get a first down or two. If, if you don't score, at least yes. keep them off the field it, a little while. Yeah, for sure. And uh, and Bryce, we, we got to recap a win too. Before we look for ahead, sure. we got to oh, look yeah. back. So uh, let's, yeah. let's take a time out. We'll come back. As we go to break, Shirley, you want to give away that pops? Let's do it right now. Booty, 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 booty everywhere. Booty, 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 booty everywhere. Three one seven twelve fifty. Caller twelve is a winner. Ten dollar gift card to Pops Old Fashioned Burgers. Shirley likes the hamburger steak. They got good cheese steaks there as well. They got a lot of good stuff there at Pops Old Fashioned Burgers. You will be a winner if you are caller twelve right now. Three one seven twelve fifty. We'll recap a pirate victory with Bryce Williams and also look ahead to ECU Navy when we return after this. It's a story that started in a community like ours. 
Cal Cunningham grew up in Lexington, where church youth groups, working at the local brickyard in McDonald's, shaped his life. And now Cal's running a different kind of campaign for the U.S. Senate. I'm Cal Cunningham. I want my service in the U.S. Senate to be about listening and going places where Democrats don't always go. That's what I learned growing up in Lexington, where we don't check voter registration before taking care of our neighbors. We believe in hard work and service, just like the soldiers I served with overseas. Cal Cunningham volunteered after 9-11, a lieutenant colonel in the Army Reserve who served three tours and took on corrupt government contractors. And Cal will take on the corruption in Washington that's been rigging the system for the drug and insurance companies. That's why Cal's not taking corporate PAC money, because he believes the top 1% don't need more favors. It's regular folks who need a voice. He'll be a senator on our side. I'm Cal Cunningham, and I approve this message. Paid for by Cal for NC. Banking is banking until service is not the same. This is Eric Clark from Select Bank and Trust, and this year has been unusual, but we have continued to focus on what has always been important to us, our customers. When businesses needed access to the Paycheck Protection Program, our team of local bankers worked around the clock to successfully keep our customers open and their employees working. Wouldn't you like to deal with a bank that is responsive to your needs, can make local decisions, and cares about you, the customer? We are Select Bank and Trust. Bank local, bank select. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Medicare is not one size fits all, but which plan is right for you? Hi, I'm Denise Walker and I'm a licensed insurance agent here in North Carolina. Whether you are turning 65, new to Medicare, or already have a plan, I can help you compare your Medicare options. I can help you find a plan offering low to no monthly premiums, prescription drug coverage, and a wide range of additional benefits like dental, hearing, vision, and more. Call me today at 434-531-5674 to get a no-cost, no-obligation Medicare benefits review. University PC Care has been the Pirate Nation's go-to IT expert since 2006. They thank you for your continued support and trust during these trying times. Many services can be done remotely and free pickup and delivery is available. As a Dell business partner and Apple authorized service provider, you can count on University PC Care for all your personal and business tech support needs. To make a remote appointment or to bring in your device for service at their Greenville or Newburn locations, call 558-1280 or go online at universitypccare.com. I'm Sam Jones, and for more than three generations, my folks have kept the fires burning for Eastern North Carolina Whole Hog Barbecue. At Sam Jones, you'll find our smokehouse pumping out wood-fired meats cooked fresh every single day. There are no freezers at our place. Everything, and we mean everything, is made fresh daily, including our sides, sweets, and sauces. Stop in and see us, and I bet you'll be able to taste our passion in just one bite. At Sam Jones Barbecue, you'll find plenty of smoke, but no mirrors. This is Stephen Igo, publisher of HoistTheColors.net. Recruiting is the lifeblood of any college sports program, and no one devotes more coverage to the future of ECU athletics than Hoist the Colors. Want to know who's going to be the next Holton Aylers or Jaden Gardner? We've got all the inside scoop on the Pirates' most talented recruits and top targets 24-7. Sign up now and get your first month of coverage for a single dollar. HoistTheColors.net, the most reliable reporting on ECU athletics. Hi, I'm Annalie Newhoff. And I'm Rob Campbell. And, and we, we are, are with, with Copy Pro. Pro. We have been locally owned and operated here in eastern North Carolina for almost 50 years. Copy Pro is the leader in office technology. Does your business struggle with keeping printing costs low or producing professional documents? Here at Copy Pro, total customer satisfaction is our number one priority. We have a variety of solutions to help reduce your printing expenses and make your business more productive. Call us today at 1-800-682-6558 or online at copypro.net. Copy Pro. We are the professional office systems people. This is assistant football coach Drew Dudzik, and you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to Hour 3 of Pirate Radio Live. This hour of PRL is brought to you by the Auto Store Group. Pirate owned and operated for over 38 years. Shop their entire inventory today at theautostoregroup.com. Now, back to the show. Well, welcome back. Keep your vehicle clean with the Pirate's Cove Car Wash Fast Pass. The Fast Pass allows you to have an unlimited car washes every month at every location. Pirate's Cove Car Wash has locations in Greenville, on 10th Street, Fire Tower Road, and Memorial Drive. Pirates Cove Car Wash, the ultimate car wash experience, and the official car wash of ECU Athletics. And congratulations to UPS Joe of Greenville. Got the $10 gift card 
courtesy of Pops. Pops Old Fashioned Cheeseburgers is now offering healthy home meals. It's always fresh. It's not frozen. Simply take it home, reheat it, and eat it. Stop by today on Charles Boulevard behind Krispy Kreme for more details. Now let's head back in to Pirate Radio Live. Here is your host, Cliff Brock. All right, congrats, Joe. I know Joe was fired up after the Pirate win on Saturday against South Florida. And I know Bryce Williams was as well. Bryce was busy today in the real world with his real work. Uh, said he'd be a little late, but Bryce, you, you said you couldn't miss coming on the show after a win, right? And oh, so yeah. You don't get these opportunities a lot. We got to we gotta talk about this. <laughs> that, well, that's for sure. I was be, Whether I was late, better late than never, I guess they say. But uh, yeah, definitely wanted to recap the good win uh, or shoot, great win that we had You know, on the road um, You know, after two consecutive losses. And you know, I put out a tweet, I guess it was whatever, Monday or Sunday, one of the days, and, you know, I, I just noticed that the offense looked smooth and just comfortable, and obviously they're executing their plays. You know, our playmakers, um, you know, stood up. It was good to see C.J. Johnson. I mean, he scored two touchdowns. I mean, that's huge. Um, I mean, it was just it was good to watch, and like I said, we took advantage of the opportunities, and, uh, you know, it was just it was a lot better game to watch than you know, the last two. So um, I'm excited, and hopefully they can, uh, you know, do that this weekend and look as comfortable and, you know, just smooth as uh, they did uh, this past weekend. And it's not fair that we do this. I'm guilty of it too, though. Every time we see a player, we say, hey, that guy reminds me of so-and-so. Like, you can't right. just let a guy be his own guy. But right. when Raji Harris got rolling the other night, oh, a ton oh, of yeah. comparisons to your former teammate, uh, Ventavious Cooper. Yeah. Yeah, that was shorter. Had stop, the dreads. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, yeah, that his first – I mean, what a great first college touchdown. I can't remember how long the run was, but at least was it 20? 42. Four, four, okay. My, yeah. You know, 40-some yards, and then um, – you know, he kind of looked like not. He didn't take his guy to the ground, but that stiff arm I saw Derek Henry do <laughs> to uh, Josh Norman. You know, uh, Raji did that to yeah. um And I don't think the guy even wanted to tackle him. He just threw his hands out. He looked Raji. back to get him. Get yeah, him I liked it. And uh, you know, that was cool for him. You know, obviously your first touchdown is a you know a great memorable, memorable moment. And um, you know, he did great. And like the Dolphins just looked really sharp. Shane Calhoun, as we holler out the tight end, yeah. one catch, 25 yards. Yeah, I saw that. Had yeah. one catch. And the whole thing, I think you said it best, Bryce. It just it was a smooth operation. It was. And you got to credit that to the line, right? I mean, they made yeah, everything they looked good. good. Yeah. Uh, didn't see quite as many, you know, uh, quarterback rushes or sacks or anything like that. And, um, you know, I think Holton, you know, looked more decisive you know if something wasn't working you know as far as the past game like he didn't hesitate to you know pull the ball and run because we know he's um very productive when he decides to you know run and make something happen for a first down and things like that so um yeah just overall like i said it was it was good to watch 17 to 26 for Aylers, the, the completion percentage where you want it there uh three touchdowns on 26 mm-hmm. attempts i mean just yeah. super efficient oh yeah for him and also got him involved in the running game that was huge yeah too, bro. Oh, oh yeah for sure and like so you can utilize your quarterback in the passing game and the running game um you know that just opens up the offense and allows the oc uh coach kirkpatrick to uh you know just take out all the you know options he can for the offense so it's it's great and um but you want to say you know obviously seeing cj's I think it was the first touchdown, the long ball. I was like, talked about long ball, long ball accuracy um, last uh, two weeks ago, mm-hmm. and then bam, here we do hit a. I'm not sure how far the pass was, but you know, a long ball and for a touchdown, and you know, that was great to see. Bryce Williams joining us inside the Pirate Radio Studios. Offense looked good, played a, uh, a clean game. Defense got after the quarterback. Rick Smith will be here Friday. I know Bryce. One thing he, he's going to talk about. Too many long plays. Mm-hmm. Still saw some long plays on the other side. Yeah. But when you can get after the quarterback, sack the quarterback, get off the field on fourth down. The Pirates had a couple of fourth down stops. They didn't let those big plays hurt them. Uh, you, the old bend but don't break defense. Yeah. You hear that phrase a lot. Uh, but the Pirates looked the best they have defensively the other night. Yeah, well. for sure. Those fourth down stops were huge. I remember seeing one. and uh, Like I said, you're putting pressure on the quarterback and everything. And uh, we see what that can do to a quarterback as far as, you know, <clears throat> passing accuracy and decision making and decision making i mean i remember the quarterback uh for usf i mean he just looked just frustrated defeated yeah 
And that's what you want to see in your <laughs> opponent is just let him. And I could just, I could tell, you know, he just looked like, my gosh, nothing's going right. You know, they're kicking my butt, and uh, which is obviously great when our defense can do that. That's interesting, Bryce. It, it, I, I guess there were times you looked across the field from you and, and saw the, the <laughs> linebacker DB on you, and you knew that. You ha- you already had an advantage on them just by, uh, by body language. Oh yeah, and uh, man, once a you know your opponent has that sort of demeanor, I mean it's it's pretty much you know you feel like it's game over. And I'm gonna <laughs> win. You know you have the mindset of winning every play, but when you kind of can, can just tail and you know tackling whatever it may be, when you when they're like that and they're they're folding, then you know they, you know you're doing something right. Shirley, let's hit the uh, celebration in the locker room because we played it for Coach Smith. I want Bryce to hear it and react to it and. And get those same goosebumps that uh, Rick Smith had on the fifth quarter. Do you still have that loaded up? All right, here's after the game, Bryce, the uh, the celebration. I could not be more proud of you. Seriously, I could not be more proud of you. Great week of practice. Great job preparation in the last 48 hours. Great focus. The best walkthroughs and meetings we've had. That just goes to show you. However you prepare, that's how you're going to play. Best Jake Verity. New school record for the joking earlier this week like it sounds like we want a bowl game or something yeah that's how how much the pirates needed this one I, for you know, sure mike houston year two his biggest win as a coach on the road here at ecu uh on the road in conference play uh you get that conference win you, you come together and uh, bryce you can speak to it better than anyone like the, the work paid off right like yeah when you don't get the results and you work that hard it's got to be demoralizing it is, yeah. when you work your tail off and it results in a blowout road victory mm. that, that's got to be an awesome oh feeling. oh yeah and uh you know one thing coach i mean he coach used to said a lot they got me fired up and <laughs> you know but really something him talking about you know walkthroughs i mean walkthroughs you know can be mon- monotonous but i mean when you're honed in and things are just flowing you don't have any um you know missing assignments on a walkthrough or bust I mean, that's just no, you can tell the guys are, you know, focused. And, you know, those are, if walkthroughs are huge, you know, you're going through your, you know, your top plays and then everything else. And you're able to really visualize, you know, certain uh, defenses or situations. And, um, you know, so, you know, I could tell that play, uh, paid off for the guys this weekend and, or this past weekend. And, um, you know, that's great to hear that energy in the locker room. I mean, I haven't heard the fight song and, uh, <laughs> goodness gracious, how long. And, uh, man, that was so fun, you know, and I could feel the energy from those guys just in that clip. And, um, Goodness, I just hope we can get some more of those and uh, sing it in Dowdy Ficklin. Yes, sir. Uh, it'd be nice to be doing that Saturday afternoon. So you mentioned, I think you you hit on a lot of it there, Bryce. But so you grind through the week of practice, and mm-hmm. but he said the last forty eight hours. What are the the keys there? The last forty eight hours before kickoff uh, to get mentally and physically ready for the game. Yeah. So I mean, obviously the last forty eight hours. You know, it's not. You know, it's physical as far as the recovery and getting the proper rest. You know, getting your hydration back up. You know, just eating. You're kind of replenishing after a long week of practice, and you know, with eating and everything. And like I said, sleep. Um, but it was they're, they're heavy mental days. You know, Thursday's real light. Um, and Thursday practice is always nice because they're short, but it's the, you know, the coaches expect everything to be sharp mm-hmm. and crisp. And um, you know, to, so to have that mental game, you know, you know you're not, you know, you know exactly what your assignment is in each situation. Your reads as a receiver, quarterback, um, the line and their calls and everything. Um, you know, to have those those 48 hours, you know, is real mental. And you know, make sure you're sharp. And I mean, like I said, it carries over if you're. You know, coaches, my goodness, you're doing walkthroughs in a hotel the night before and guys are having bus. You're like, that coaches do not like that. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, the guys must have been sharp and uh, it paid off. Well, it sounds like a great week of preparation for the Pirates last week. Hopefully they're having one of those uh, mm-hmm. this week in preparation for Navy. And, uh, you know, Bryce, the, the, when we see Navy, obviously the first thing we think about is the triple option. But mm-hmm. last year they had a solid defense. ECU only scored 10 points against Navy. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, that's clearly not even close to enough. So they're going to have to have a better effort this year. 
uh, against Navy, and again, you know, making your possessions count. Well, sure. what? How do you, you know, what, what's the key for the offense this week against? Yeah, the I mean, uh, off the execution. Um, you know, not you know, not having any mistakes. I mean, you can't be 100, percent but definitely the mental mistakes. You know, offsides. You know, false starts, uh, fumbles. You know, interceptions, things like that. You know, you just can't have you can't have those versus any team. But you know, Navy uh, is the the uh, team on the schedule this week, and you know, we know how they can run the clock out. And you start doing three, you know, several three and outs while Navy's just chugging along the field, burning the clock. You know, you don't want to be behind the eight ball with a team that can drain the clock as Navy can. You played against them 2015? Mm-hmm. I th- yeah. I th- was it once or twice? I can't remember. Well, there was a game in 2012, mm-hmm. and you were that probably was, red Yeah, shirt. that was like the red shirt kind of learning year. Um, then we played up in Annapolis. 15, I believe. Right? And, and yeah. Do you remember, like... Because, again, they're not recruiting the same type of player that every other school is. Right. I mean, we're talking about guys who are, you know, serving the country oh, yeah. and, and just different people. Uh, do you remember their defense being different than other teams? Um, anything come to mind on that? Nothing comes to mind right away, yeah. um, you know, with them. But I do remember the game a little bit. And um, it was one of my, you know, my better games. And I think, what was the score, if you could pull it? I was, I'm was, i just kind of curious. Um, but I, I remember, like I said, they just kept chugging along uh, down the field. They kept, you know, they kept converting first downs. And like I said, it's frustrating. I think we had some big plays. You sure you want to uh, Oh, God. I don't remember being that bad. Dang. But it was let's see twenty eight fourteen at halftime. They scored seventeen in the uh, fourth quarter. Mm. But I mean that this was the Keenan Reynolds. Uh, uh, he was That's amazing right. at quarterback yeah. for Navy. In fact, did he see the all time leading score like in NCAA history? I want to say five touchdowns for Keenan Reynolds that day. Oh, that the quarterback. Day. Yeah, let's see what yeah. Bryce did. Did Bryce do anything? Did you get in the stat sheet? Five for 47, two touchdowns. Yeah. You should remember this game. <laughs> oh, no, I mean, I remember what I did. I couldn't remember how the team did. And, oh, you had a great game. Yeah, that was. I remember we uh, one. I think it was my was whatever touchdown was over the middle and for some pretty tight coverage. And um, yeah, I remember that game. But that, that was frustrating. You know, I mean, I think they all. You know, our sideline was getting frustrating. You know, we could see that in players and coaches. And you know, when things start getting like that and. You know, just sort of feel like you're getting things out of out of your hands, and you know it's never good. Obviously, as the score says, thirty six, thirty eight, time of possession for Navy. So that's what they do. They dominated that. But again, your number one key, you know, executing, but two turnovers. Uh, Blake yeah. Kemp interception, and then I guess the Pirates had a fumble mm-hmm. that day as well. Two turnovers for ECU, and you, you got to be clean uh, mm-hmm. against Navy for sure. Yeah. All right, let's take a timeout. Shirley, we'll come back. We uh, will talk a little more football with Bryce. We also have to go Pirate Radio Outdoors with Bryce Williams. We'll see what Bryce did this week in the water, in a stand, maybe elsewhere. We'll find out when we return on Pirate Radio Live. We're back after this. Hey guys, listen up. The next 30 seconds is very important because we have an announcement. Shimmer Boutique is your one-stop shop to make you look good and thoughtful. This is Ashley at Shimmer Boutique. We specialize in men's and women's apparel and also carry the biggest selection of local hats and jewelry. From Yetis to Hey Dudes, this is the place for you. Did I mention we also have free gift wrapping? Come check us out at our new location on Greenville Boulevard behind Starbucks. Shimmer is your one-stop shop for the whole family and we will always make your shopping experience easy and fun. Here with Mike Mullis from Fixed NC. And Mike, you were telling me the other day, people ask you all the time, I didn't know you did that. What does that mean? You know, anything that involves property damage repair, call us first. If it's your crawl space, you've got interior humidity issues, a water loss, your ice maker line breaks, obviously fire and smoke, everybody knows we do those. But anything that involves interior or exterior property damage, we're your repair experts. Mike, how can everybody get in touch with you? 252-999-0001 or FixedNC.com. Let's turn a trip to the branch into a tap on your phone. Let's hit pause on a lost debit card without hitting pause on life. That's how First National Bank is redefining convenience with a top-rated mobile app that puts more security and control at your fingertips and friendly people to help you succeed right by your side. Let's get started at fnb-online.com or your local First National Bank. FNB member FDIC. You don't need a big meeting. You don't need a birthday. You don't need any excuse at all. You just need to love subs. Times 12. 
Order the Jersey Mike's catering box today. Jersey Mike's. Be a sub above. It's Jersey Mike's time. One Club Supreme? Check. What's Aaron's way? Only $2.99 for Pepsi and Lay's? I'm in. Order your sub Aaron's way on the Jersey Mike's app or visit a Jersey Mike's store. You know texting while driving is dangerous. That's not new information. Yet most people admit to doing it anyway. Drivers are 23 times more likely to be involved in a car accident while texting. Know the facts and wait to text. The danger is real and it applies to you. Auto Owners Insurance. The no problem people. Information provided by Virginia Tech Transportation Institute. This is Norm Bryant with Town Insurance in Greenville. Call me today at 756-8300. Go Pirates! White Claw Hard Seltzer. Discover a new wave of refreshment. Crafted using seltzer water, 5% alcohol, and a hint of fruit. Available in five fruit flavors, two grams of carbs, gluten-free, and 100 calories. Find it at whiteclaw.com. White Claw Hard Seltzer. Nothing tastes quite like it. Please drink responsibly. Hard seltzer with natural flavors. White Claw Seltzer Works, 2019 Chicago. Visit whiteclaw.com for full nutritional information. When you don't have time to go to lunch, let Jimmy John's deliver lunch to you. With Jimmy John's, we can get a freaky fresh sandwich to you freaky fast. Click to order at jimmyjohns.com. Dinner's great. It's one of your top three favorite meals. You just don't want to have to make it. Well, with Jimmy John's, you don't have to. Whether you live in a sandwich delivery zone or head into the store, you can always get a freaky fresh sandwich. Click to order at jimmyjohns.com. Every team knows that the two-point play can be a winning move. That's why I'm here. State Farm agent Timothy Sawyer and my team are here to help you go for two by combining your home and auto insurance. It's a great call that saves you time and money. So go for the win and score some savings by combining your home and auto. It's just another way we're here to help life go right. Call me, Timothy Sawyer, at 493-0002 today. Yo, ho, you're listening to Pirate Radio. You're listening to Hour 3 of Pirate Radio Live. This hour of PRL is brought to you by the Auto Store Group. Pirate owned and operated for over 38 years. Shop their entire inventory today at theautostoregroup.com. Now back to the show. Welcome back. Taking a look at your stock market report for the day. The Dow dropped 150, excuse me, 165 points at 28,514. The NASDAQ is down 95 at 11,768. And the S&P is down 23 points at 3,488. That's your Wells Fargo Advisors Financial Report. For a personal look into investing, call Wells Fargo Advisors today at 756-6900 in Greenville. Wells Fargo Advisors, LLC, member SIPC. Now let's head back in to Pirate Radio Live. Here's your host, Cliff Brock. All right, Charlie Rhodes, thank you very much. Chandler Honeycutt, video production today. Great job, crew. Bryce Williams, part of the crew, on a Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Bryce, um, let's get your final thoughts on ECU Navy before we go into Pirate Radio Outdoors. So, I just showed you during the break the past scores in the series. Yeah. They've not been pretty. No. No, not at all. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, seven games. We've won one. One, one. And it took a Herculean effort from Dominique Davis. Who yeah. Broke Aaron Rodgers. Uh, consecutive completion streak Jeez. in that game went 40 of 45. Pirates are able to win it 38 uh, 35. I've been saying all week, Bryce, you better go ahead and plan on having to score 35 42 points if you want to win this game. Oh, yeah. No, yeah, you got to dang. We got to score some points and hopefully we can have some of these scores flip flopped. Have ECU on some <laughs> of these scores. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping so. I'm, I mean, obviously, I've got the Pirates winning. Is it time for a prediction? Yes. Um, I mean, I, I definitely got ECU winning. We're coming off a big road win. I mean, the energy I felt in that little clip you played of him in the locker room. And, you know, the guys got the taste of it again. And, you know, they know how they can play. Um, I mean, also ECU, I'm going to go ECU. I'm going to flip-flop on these scores. I'm going to go <laughs> ECU. We'll say we scored, what, 40-some points last week. Yeah. So I'm going ECU 45, Navy 
35. 45-35, high-scoring game at Dowdy Ficklin Stadium Saturday at noon, according to Bryce Williams. I like it. All right, yes. Bryce. All right, now we will get into a uh, reoccurring Wednesday segment. It's Pirate Radio Outdoors with Bryce Williams. Oh, yeah. As he tells us what he's been up to the previous week. So, Bryce, what would you do this past week? week well, week? let's see. La- this past Friday, finally got in the, in the deer stand and uh, with my bow and friend of mine was able to you know ask if i want to go hunt on a farm he can hunt and i said well sure so we went out there and i was like man i just want to shoot a doe well it was pretty dang slow the whole evening um he's of course in another stand saying yeah i got some does coming out and he was been in the stand like 30 minutes i'm like what the heck i had to wait all the way till last light and i tell you they're smart i mean my goodness and i had two does coming right down the path just enough to where you can see a silhouette and the way it kind of is the path makes an L and there's a block of woods in between that L and I was on the other side and I'm like oh man if they keep rounding the path it'll be a little 15 yard chip shot still see a silhouette and I was going to take it well they're smarter than what people think and uh, (laughs) they cut the corner in that block of woods and shoot down to my right probably 70 yards and by the time they they time it up nice you know just perfect you know just you can see them just part, you know, just enough, and then by the time they get in shooting range, it's pitch dark, and they're already, you know, this they're case, they're in the taunting field. you. It sounds. Like. It was. I said, "Oh man, I'm about to, ha- you know, shoot a deer." I mean, here we go, and they cut the corner, and what you know it. So, in so, deer terms, did you, did you get skunked, or is skunk not seeing? Uh, right? What is? I guess skunked is not seeing anything. Okay, all right. So I guess I can at least say, you know, I saw something, which oh. is. You know, easier to say than I didn't shoot anything. Yeah. Um, Because sometimes I can say, yeah, I just saw like a little spike or, you know, a small buck. And, you know, I decided to pass them up. You know, kind of a little pride. And when I tell people that, it's like, yeah, I passed them up. Wasn't good enough, you know. (laughs) So I did that. And then I've been in the... um, I've been in the works of you know selling my current boat. Um, So I'm trying to sell my boat and get a a bay boat. So I went and test drove a, a blackjack the other... Was it two days ago? Um, so we'll see. You know, made off front. We'll see if he wants to take it and all that. So I was on the water and in the woods. So it's always good. Uh, Bryce, I saw a video online this week of a guy who was on a hike. He thought he saw like some bobcats or like some little bobcats, but mm-hmm. it turned out to be like cougar cubs. Oh, and a cougar stalked him for like six miles. Have yeah, I, I, I think I saw it on uh, on Instagram. The, he's walking backwards, talking yeah. to it. And uh, <laughs> have well, you I, ever been in the wild and been scared of an animal before? Any th- animal? Thankfully, well, uh, obviously down east here, you know, you're walking and you know black bear kind of prevalent here, so. Um, I've never been on the ground when I've seen a black bear, but I have been in the stand and have them, you know, not too far away, but have some black bear around. And you're not too weary of it because, you know, you got a gun, but this guy was just a hiker. And yeah. I mean, thankfully, you know, he saw it, you know, you know, thankfully he wasn't had his back to it walking the trail and the thing, you know, comes up behind him and pounces on him. So thankfully he at least saw it so he could, you know, be prepared and I saw him trying to jump at it. But I think when he jumped at it one time it kinda came towards him. So Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a little scary. I would be quite uh worked up if uh you know, if I came across one of those. I was hoping he would like pick up all the rocks that were around him to throw at. I think he eventually did that and that got the cougar to run away. Yeah. Finally. Did you see how he would like a approach him the way the cougar would kind of like oh yeah jump at him yeah, yeah. oh do um, jump I, know. I would be scared <laughs> out of I, my I tell mind you, well it would have took me six miles to realize like, i gotta <laughs> I got throw a rock at <laughs> right him. yeah you Good know point. yeah <laughs> but a lot of people were saying that he did the right thing by staying you know keeping, oh yeah you know not turning his back right being slow about everything but as we talk about wildlife interactions i saw a video on facebook and i don't know how old this video is but this uh this man and his daughter were going to buy a house and as they were going by they noticed a black bear was right outside the occupant's truck that was sitting outside in their driveway (laughs) the bear stands on its back two feet opens the door like a human and gets in the truck closes the truck i mean it looked like there was a human in a bear suit but it was an actual bear it was the (laughs) craziest thing i've ever seen speaking of human in the animal suit have you seen this video bryce so somebody threw a lit cigarette into the orangutan uh exhibit at the zoo oh my orangutan picks it up goes and chills by the rail 
What and in the world? Puffs, inhales. He's just chilling, smoking a cigarette. That is hilarious. <laughs> yeah, he's been paying attention to people at his, at, outside his pen. He must have been uh, learning. Pay- <laughs> yeah, he was learning one of those. <laughs> I mean, in the world. He is just absolutely chilling over there. That's hilarious. All right. There's your Pirate Radio Outdoors for the week. Um, Saw some news. Shirley, you passed this along. I saw it on Twitter. Let me uh, me get the actual tweet once again, because this is probably the last guy you want to see that has uh, (laughs) tested positive for coronavirus. And if you're a college football fan overall. And a, a breaking news from Bruce Feldman, a statement from Alabama. Early this afternoon, we received notification that Coach Nick Saban and Athletics Director Greg Byrne tested positive for COVID-19. Both immediately left the facility, went to their homes to self-isolate after receiving that information. So Alabama is scheduled to play Georgia on Saturday night. And look, this is just something you got to deal with every week. Uh, there's a chance that... This could potentially, uh, there could be something that affects ECU with this this week. We will have wow. to see about that. But you, you just uh, you follow the news day to day, hour to hour. Keep your fingers crossed that you can play a game this weekend. But Nick Saban uh, testing positive, that's, uh, that's a big deal because yeah. now what does that mean for their game against Georgia uh, coming up on Saturday night. We Jeez, shall see. how quick that thing's getting retweeted and liked. <laughs> it's the whole it's country, going up. I don't know what's going to happen by the time of the day. <laughs> That's right. Um, uh, but, like, the SEC kind of went out there and said, hey, we're – we're not having full capacity, but we're going to open this thing up. We're going to play football, and now you've had two games already postponed. The Ole Miss game is in jeopardy, which will be a third, and then now Nick Saban. So, like, they uh, – I don't know. Uh, tough tough deal there for the SEC right now. And really, you know, all across – it's already affected the NFL uh, as we've seen games move, Bryce. So, uh surely you did say cam newton's back at practice right for the patriots so uh yeah and uh i can't think of uh i want to say is it drew lock for the broncos yes he is back he practiced today too but it it, that was not covid related i believe that was just an injury but so both quarterbacks should be ready to go for this weekend's uh, patriots broncos game they were unable to play last week so they'll uh they'll play their game coming up this week Got some uh, some Braves baseball about to happen. Atlanta up two to nothing in the series, and they will take on the Dodgers coming up just after six o'clock. And uh, Shirley, what do we got? We got no Thursday night football tomorrow night on Pirate Radio. I guess we that don't have correct. another game until uh, Sunday. Yeah, we've got a triple header of games. And if you had asked me five minutes ago, I could have looked at it <laughs> no and told problem, you no what problem. it is. But we will have. Uh, games beginning our coverage begins at 11 o'clock on um no is it no it's not 11 o'clock is it oh boy oh wait yeah our coverage begins at 11 o'clock on sunday on sunday nfl triple header yes our Trouble coverage Hatter. begins at 8 a.m saturday on the bud light pregame tailgate we'll be with you four hours getting you ready for the kickoff ecu taking on navy and then after the game the u.s sailor fifth quarter call-in show bryce williams has ECU knocking off the midshipmen 45 to 35. That's right. We're going to score some points. More importantly, yeah. we're going to get well, a few I, stops. I would like to not see us give up that many points. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, we've seen, I've seen in the past, they can score points. But obviously, I got the uh, the Pirates in, in front. You ever, uh, even high school career, played in that kind of offense? They run heavy offense like that? Or were you always chunking it around wherever you were? We, I think we were have more. Uh, we were pretty uh, diverse. I think we were kind of equally did. A few times, I think we ran um, a little more in some games than, than throwing. So, And then Bryce hitched bit. his wagon to the uh, the air raid here at ECU. Yes, thank so goodness. get him some touches. Thank goodness. And some touchdowns. Yeah. Bryce, thanks for hanging out, man. Thank you for having me. Enjoyed it. We'll see you next yes. Wednesday. Coming up Thursday on Pirate Radio Live. Looking forward to this. So, a Greenville resident who uh, went to Navy, played football at Navy, now their director of ops, Brian Blick, will join us. He played quarterback at J.H. Rose for some of those great Rose teams back in the 2000s. Uh, he will join me on the show. Now the director of ops at Navy Football. Got him coming up Thursday. Steven Igo, Troy D. Touchdown Tony Collins will be back on Thursday as well. So we will see you 3 o'clock Thursday for another edition of Pirate Radio Live. Make sure you keep it locked to our social media sites for all the breaking news. We got... Uh, Donnie Kirkpatrick and Blake Harrell Zoom's coming up, so 
Uh, all of those quotes, videos will be out on our social media sites. Keep it locked to Pirate Radio. We'll see you Thursday at 3. So long, everybody. Thanks for listening to Pirate Radio.